Yo, 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 live from Atlanta, Georgia. You watching New Jack Thriller City. Man, everybody give it up, give it up, give it up. Woo! Shout out to the biggest, the baddest, uh, uh, dopest DJ in the land, DJ Wiz. The, the, the Wiz is great. All right, all right. And my uh, hostess with the most is, you know what I'm saying? She brung that wagon in here today and everything. Dragon. That wagon, that dragon. Oh, yeah, she doing a thing. She dragging that wagon. Y'all give it up for the one and only, the, the, the gorgeous, delicious. Thank you. She's so scrumptious. Thank you. And on today's show, man, we got my player partner, my homeboy, my friend. We talk every day on the phone, and he's the newest addition, like Bobby Brown, to this show. <laughs> man, y'all give it up for RL. Hey, 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 hey. Let's get in. Hey. Yo, what's up, RL? Hey man, you already know that I even you know I'm I'm Robert today. I even put the ring on and everything. Usually I when I'm out it. being the artist, I'm like, yeah, okay, this isn't. But when I'm around family, I can you know be myself. So it's just different. I, I feel like I'm at home. I'm jumping in. First of all, good to see you. Good to see you. But okay, so what is that like for your lovely wife? Um, I'm always the first flight guy. I'm always <laughs> on the first flight because I know that the only thing open later are legs and gas stations. So I'm, I'm trying to get on the first flight to the crib because, I mean, I'm a man first. Right. Um, but I think after Rory was born, my daughter, it, it, a lot of perspectives changed anyway. Right. So I think she understands. Like, it's a character. It's like Superman, you know, he takes his glasses off, right? This is... I gotta I take this off when it's time to work. It's just, it's just I have to be able to turn it on and off. But right. like when I get off a flight, after doing this show and all these people screaming and all that, and I come home, as soon as I open that door, if there's trash that needs to be taken out, I, you it. gotta be able to turn it off. And early when you're not mature, mm -hmm. It's hard to turn that off. You're yes. like, wait a minute, hose was all up. Right, just you two minutes to ago. Listen now, to, uh, what? <laughs> Twerk, something. You know what I'm saying? You gotta learn, you know, to turn it off when you get to the crib. <laughs> so that's different now, huh? <laughs> It's, yeah. not a, it's not a twerk some on demand. Uh, you're right. No, okay. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. I just had to ask that because me being delicious and married, <laughs> strange marriage, um, it was no such thing as I couldn't wear my ring. I... I... That was it, a threat to the environment. Well, for, for oh, hold on, me, hold on, hold on. This is a conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but this yeah, is a thing? Yeah, yeah. No, really? I, I think that for me... Um, the, I hate to say because I don't want to sound sexist. I know it's different, but mm -hmm. I always feel like men men might look at it differently. Like I this bet ring, you this, do, this but that, 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 how dare I'm gonna tell you how. I'm gonna tell you how because <laughs> usually that ring um, cost me a lot of shows, right? <laughs> and that and and what it represents for me on you is a little different from what this represents. I don't, this doesn't mean, it, this means something, but it doesn't mean as much as your ring does. That's why mine is smaller. I like that you broke that down like that. So that doesn't mean love to you. No, her having my last name. Yes. That means, so the ring is the extension of my last name. To right. me, for me, I can't say for everybody, cause I don't take it off and be like, let me hide this. Because truthfully, I hate to say it like this, but I probably get more attention with the ring on. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. they be like, and it's like, oh, you already know, especially with social media, you know, I'm Rory's dad now, or yeah. they know Lena Hugs. So yeah. I'm not hiding anything. It's just that I have to become somebody else. Like I, even in, a, in the dressing room, I, I have an issue with my group members sometimes because they like having people back there. Right. And I look at it like before the game, who's in the locker room with the team besides the coaches? No one. I need to be, in you know, that mold. I'm rude kind of before I have to Turn, I'm not Rory's dad anymore. It has to be something else. Okay. So this ring, if I look down at it and I'm dancing and a girl, I, I, I it's this out of place. Exactly. I get that. And, and that's I'm singing. I'm holding somebody's hand and they touching this. This yeah. is sacred. So it's like my shield. I, I put this on after the show. I, if that makes a lot of sense. My, my husband thought well, you better. I don't care what club you're in. I don't care how they're on you, how they're taking pictures. You better have that ring on. It better be shiny. <laughs> better be wearing it. Okay, but that's, that's how he it. felt. That's how he felt. That's and how, he felt. how did you feel though? Did you feel like you was in ring jail? No, not at all. I actually, um, I have been separated for the last so and so months, and it's still so on my and finger. So. so it's not even. I, okay. I actually love what it represents. What does I it represent? It, it represents that I'm, I belong to someone, or I'm at least off the market. 
Okay. That's what it meant. And what keeps you wearing it, it now? Being that you're going through a transition, I, I, I respect that. I respect yeah. that because you, things can turn around, and a show. guy and a guy will really hurt with the. So what happened when we wasn't together, though? Exactly, and I can imagine Ooh. that because I, well, I won't say that. I just sit back and think of that because I do look at it as men and women are different in a lot of different you know circumstances. So I have not been with anyone since my husband and I haven't been together since February. Let me ask you a question. I got it. Mm -hmm for all of the viewers out there. <laughs> and again, this is just my perspective. Mm -hmm. Say y'all a couple and y'all walk in to a spot together. Yeah. And you see a dude that she used to mess with and y'all see a chick that she used to mess with. Who's the, now watch this, who's the chick talking about? She's talking about me. Look at it, oh that's who we, look what she got, who's the dude talking about? Mm, oh, you talking about I, him? No, I used to have her like this. I still got it in my phone, cuz. Oh Listen, so it's God. always, the pressure is on you it to always, always be a queen. Yeah. Because wherever you go, the worst thing that can happen is, and this happened to me when I was younger, I'm holding her hand, I'm trying to introduce, oh, we, oh, oh what's up, such and such, and she calling the nickname, and I'm like, how do you know that name? That's right. So that, that, that's, mm. there's, in, men are more insecure than women, I'm gonna keep it 100. So that's, that's that insecurity right there, just to know, did you love him? I, hold on, hold on. How, how am I insecure and I ain't got my body done? I'm gonna tell you. Cause I, can, I, I can afford to go get my, 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 my chest done. But you don't need, but, but you know what? You have personality, there's a difference. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I got so many, I got so, my, my personality got abs. No, my husband obliques. was heavy. Well, mm. we, now we all slim and trim. But my husband was heavy. My husband was a big guy mm, when mm. I got with him. I actually liked him better when he was heavier, so. <laughs> you so you saying he's that he, he started when 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 now that he's healthy he didn't he had start acting different. Oh my God, dude, he left me <laughs> hell. He's very different. Cheers. Hold on, hold on, what left you? <laughs> he, yeah. he got a BNL, a Brazilian nigga lift. Baby, what oh, oh, happened? No, he got a, a BBL, a Brazilian brain lift. I got a BBL, Brazilian, Brazilian <laughs> dick lift. <laughs> so I knew you was going. You know I was going there. <laughs> Hey, you be trying to make me fight that shit. I really been working on me. Like he been, you know, helping me get the get the R and B side of me and whatnot. And come to he like Jackie, it ain't always got to be that rough and that hard. Cause we've been writing some music together and stuff. And have you really met? Bro, let me yeah. tell you, this guy right here. Oh, I know. Is the oh, goat. This yeah. is the most oh, underrated man. writer yes, I've man. ever met. And my producer, <laughs> man, incomparable. I'm talking about he on some Quincy Jones oh, man. type. Thank you, man. You, Oh, T Teddy Riley, whoever you think is <laughs> the dopest nigga out there. Man, Yo, he, he, man, he, he, but he, not, he giving him a run no, for wait, money. I do got to say this because we've known each other for a long time. You've been in my house. You've been around my family. I'm proud of you. And Aww. I'm honored that you have me on here with y'all because you can, you've added to people and they haven't reciprocated. Everybody hasn't because if they had, you would already be in a whole different stratosphere anyway. But now you have the right people around you that are, are letting you be great like you are. And that's why when you hit me, it's first, second ring. And if I'm in the middle, or I could be on stage as soon as I get off. It's dress room call. What's up? What's up, bro? It's a different type of relationship because I see greatness in you. And I know that the world going to get to see it. So I'll be able to look back and be like, yo, I was one of the first. I'm, look, go look at the footage. <laughs> Bro, thank you, man. Cause he, you, you treat me like that. You, you, man, like, I mean, I don't, I don't really talk about what I've done and who I helped and all this. Stuff. I really don't like to do that and stuff. But man, just the the, the fact that you do, and I, I, I look up to you, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, you, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm proud of you. Man. And uh, you know, anything that I could ever do to help your situation out, man, I'm in. Whatever you want to do, whatever time you want to do it in, and I'm so honored that you'd even, you know, what I'm saying, consider being uh, on, on on this project and doing this show with me. I'm thrilled. You, that's the that's the okay, word. Thriller. I'm thrilled. Wow. Okay, that's what I gotta say. Wow. wow. That's the catchphrase now. Y'all gotta start using that. I'm thrilled. I like that. I'm thrilled. That's dope. I'm that, thrilled. We gotta make that. We gotta make an unthrilled uh, yes. segment on the show. What thrills you? That, what thrills you? There you go. Thrill seekers. Oh, no, yo, that's that's in, that's in addition to. My relationship segment that we're going to discuss later that <laughs> I need to have. We need yes. to, okay, let's, please, <laughs> ladies. Speaking of underrated, I think the underrated are the top dogs now. Mm. Like the, the, uh, the artists, the producers, the writers, the musicians. 
I think all that are underrated are really the ones that are the goats. One hundred percent. And you, but you know, one thing that I don't want to happen to me, because mm -hmm. I do. I go in front. I do feel underrated, but I definitely want to get my flowers while I'm here, and I, I want. I want to see. I, I don't. I don't want to be Frankie Lyman. <laughs> Gotcha. I don't want to die and 20, 30 years later niggas tell this dope ass story about me dope. on this dope movie that I don't get to see. Yeah, I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've lived a, a really amazing life up to now, you know what I'm saying? Between love, career, people that I've worked with mm -hmm. and some old shit, people that I help get on and all that other stuff and whatnot. You know, the, 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 the sex, the, the drugs, <laughs> the rap, the, well, okay. you know, the rock and roll and all. But I want I want I want that to be, I, I want to get the flowers while I'm here. You want to get acknowledged. Yes, I want, I want it to get acknowledged, well, man. I want to be one of, the, one of them dudes and, this and is, stuff, this is, you know? This is the this beginning is of that beginning journey. Of this is, it feels like, this feels like right now, in this space, yeah. this time, yeah. while we're talking, mm -hmm. this is the beginning. This is the beginning. This, this feels like the beginning right now. I got chills. I got chills just being on set with y'all. Oh my right goodness! Now. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. That or are you chilly? Man, one hundred percent. It's okay. cold in here. <laughs> Look here. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, Aria, uh, uh, oh man, like let's let's talk about the the music, man. Okay. Let's talk about the music because I w it's funny that you and um, Delicious came out swinging with this relationship and the ring thing. Because I was just gonna ask, what all the butter love you didn't had inside <laughs> your life? Like, what makes you say, "Hey, it's time." It's time to I, hang up it's easy. that stick of butter. Because cause every man wants to feel special, right? You want to feel like somebody with you for you, right? And I was always a relationship dude. Um, always. always. Really? Like, always, I always wanted to be in a relationship. Uh, I wanted the security. I wanted to know somebody was with me for me. Plus, I'm nasty, and I can't be just nasty with everybody. That's one thing I hate. <laughs> yeah. You you can't you get monkey pox all kind of shit. Right. I mean, go ahead. I'm, but, I'm, but, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I, I won't say I won't say I won't say who. So I, this was my gentleman stage. One of the first times we were on tour with a very big group, and I met a young lady. I was like, oh word. And I was like, you know, what? I'm not gonna bring her to the room tonight. Um, I'm exchange numbers with her. She came and hung out. I was getting late. Um, you should probably go. Mm. And I was I did that whole thing right. So the next morning, and, and this is when you stayed at the hotels that are kind of like, when you open the door, you can see the hotels ac like across the hotel, like, mm -hmm. like one of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I was coming out of my room, and she was coming out of another group. Dude's Members' room? room? Yeah, no, not my member, but another, like the-, the From uh, another group. She, 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 hey, somebody caught her on the way out. And it's, what I realized is she was, she just wanted somebody. I don't want a groupie. I'll take a Rally. Like, right. or That's I would different. back then. I already mean she just, I, I've always loved you. I've always wanted to meet you. I've always wanted to you. Right. A groupie means anybody from any of the groups or anybody that's on tour. To me, there's a difference in women that say, oh, I don't want you to think I'm a groupie. A groupie means that if one of my group members or somebody from Drew, Jagged, wants somebody, anybody, that's what it was. I just always wanted to feel special. Right. You know what I mean? And that was the hard part. The other thing is, I didn't want to, Sleep with you. I wanted to lay with you, but mm -hmm. you had to go. Afterwards. Yeah. So that should be weird, don't <laughs> it? Like, you you don't know how to tell somebody to leave. You're Aries. Mm, uh huh. Makes sense. Okay. I mean, no. For me to understand. Yeah, what? Yeah. No, both of my daughters are Aries. Oh. Okay. So I understand the logic of Aries. Okay. And so I was. I was wondering where yeah. you was going with that. No, both of my daughters are, are Aries. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, I just wanted. To, I've always wanted to just feel special. In any yeah. situation. I'm a middle child. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm Marcia, the youngest Marcia, in the group. Marcia. So right. Mm -hmm. So I've always said I, something I got it gotta be different. You got mm -hmm. I, what you've done this with him, he did what? What about your ear? What about your nostril? Wow. Some, I, wow. I need something different. <laughs> wow. So it was always I gotta yeah. make me feel special. And so when you found it, how did you know that was different? What's funny is when I met Lena, uh was actually at a studio. She her her cousin had an artist. She had just came because of Katrina. Mm -hmm. Um her she from New Katrina. Orleans. Yeah, she's from New Orleans. Oh wow. And I met her and I told her the day I met her, I was like, I'm gonna marry you one day. And wow. I was in a situation kind of, she was, we were both, it was crazy. I took her phone, I was like, oh, that's a nice phone, got to see your phone, put it on the phone. But then, I, honestly, she gave me blue balls for like six months straight. And, and that FEMA check. Disappeared. Her. I love no, her. No, but no, disappeared and got back with her dude that she had been with in New Orleans. And two years later, she called me about a charity event. As soon as I heard her voice, I was dating some new girl at church. I heard her voice, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do the charity event, but I need to see you. Oh, you would do? Nope. Okay, cool. She literally came and saw me 
uh, New Year's Day, we she finally, you know, did what she was supposed to do mm -hmm. on the 4th of January. Which was be with you? No. Yeah, be with me, but be Physically. with biblically. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And Hey, you heard what he said, did what she was supposed to do. Right, right. And, 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 that, that's, and, a, that's, the, that's the words months. of a man and, but not, that invested but dis, by 2,500 But disappeared for two years on me, but, you know, marriage is hard, but mm. I had been in a situation before where I had been married and the dude I sang at his wedding reception, an NFL player, mm. and uh, he, Michael was, Vick. he was messing with, who'd you say? Michael Vick. No, his name is Michael, but it ain't Vick, though. Oh, wow. But it was, it was another, I was in Minnesota. He, I, we hung out every day, mm -hmm. you know, come over, play PlayStation, everything you could think of. And um, he was pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? And it, so I had been hurt, and I was really like, okay, never again. I'm, I'm cool. Right. But... You know, Lena was innocent. It was a different situation. She's a sweet girl. You know what I mean? Again, every marriage, every relationship, listen, you already know it's hard. It is. Because you have, it's selfless. Yeah. Love, well, marriage is selfless. Mm. You know, we're all programmed to be selfish in certain aspects. So yeah. it's still a work in progress. You know what I'm saying? But that's dope that you were able to even find that. Now, did you and your music, did you come to like a head when you would have to go and perform and be around these venues with these women, and no ring? Nah, uh-uh, because truthfully, once you've been, and I hate to say it like this, once you've been with Do it. certain things that are like, you've been, you're scared, I'm scared of whores, I'm scared of, Good. I hate to say it like that. That's like, where I'm at now. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I get Monkey pox. Right, no, no, I had a, my son is 26, my daughter wow. is five. So, mm. I had a child really young. I was pretty much a child. So I remember I, I, I would put on a condom to go to sleep just in case I dreamt about some sex. I was so scared. I got on the know, condom now. I were believe you. You. <laughs> you were always like that? Yeah, yeah I was, no, I was really, I, certain Daydreams. things in my life happened, you know, that scared me, whether it was love, whether it was, you know, children, anything. Um, everything's been a blessing. Everything's a lesson when you look back in hindsight. But truthfully, mm -hmm. it was scary. You know, being young, didn't, didn't know what was going to happen, how it was going to happen. Uh, moving to Atlanta by myself. Where you know are you saying? from? Minneapolis, Northside, y'all. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Born oh, and raised. I never guessed that. Okay. okay. That's pretty dope. Wait, are, are you are you from Detroit? Where are you from? I am from Detroit. I love Detroit. Yeah, you Detroit go to Detroit, Detroit all the time. Yeah, I love Detroit. Detroit they, they was the, that was the city that showed us the most love in the beginning of our uh, careers. Like, why, I love that? Why, why do you feel that way? Though? We loved their music, and then what they were talking about, and then they were good looking. Hey, Lena, oh, that's my homegirl. <laughs> but no, you guys were like really good looking, and then it was three of them. It was just dope. Detroit, they had that that vibe. Detroit is yeah. it was was amazing, amazing city. Like they showed us more love than our hometowns. So. So, wow. which is different. You know, I love home, but Detroit, you, I'll never forget, it was the city. first place. You should have cut really, your ass out of your Our city. first <laughs> show, our first major show was with Chris Tucker and Melanie Camacho at the Fox wow, in Detroit. Fox our theater. first major show, yep. That's pretty dope. So what made you the relationship specialist out of the group? I don't even think I am. I think Tweet is the motivational speaker. That's him. For me, I just try to be honest. What I learned is people like realness. Like when I, I can come in and say, look, we be having issues. That's why I hate being around couples. Oh, honey, everything's great. You're lying. Right. He just <laughs> smacked you in the car and you just need him uh, wow. in the nuts on the way in here. And I'm trying to act like everything's perfect. <laughs> nah, stuff be that. messed up. So I just like honesty. I try to be as transparent as I can. Yeah, yeah. That's what a lot of relationships is missing is just transparency right. and whatnot. And, and you know, um, I'd always like to think of myself as a straight shooter. i tell you, telling you exactly what I want. Don't try to conform to who I am to to make me happy. If you ain't down with that, don't be down with that. Right. Mm -hmm. be, I'm, I'm looking for like-minded people that are inside Hello. of the same. The, on the or same they might be able to introduce you to some new shit that you ain't even, wasn't even up on. You'd be like, oh, I like that. 100%. But you won't know that if they're not authentically being themselves. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And but that people are so afraid to be themselves in front of you because they, they, they're scared they might lose you or they, you won't fuck with them no more. That's because the and honeymoon phase. I probably phase. shouldn't fuck with you when I find out who you really are. I probably would have never fucked with you. <laughs> and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, that's the honeymoon phase. Like, I, I always, I hate to say it, but I was an a-hole in the beginning of relationships purposely because I wanted to get that out the way. Lena even teases me now because she put the toilet paper under and I was like, nah, baby. When put she first came to my house, she, this, is how, this is the right way. So she <laughs> would tease me, but I was like, no, we have to have an understanding of certain things <laughs> of the because stuff. the honeymoon's after the wedding. 
Oh. Not before. People have this honeymoon phase where, oh, it doesn't bother me that much. If it bothers you a little in the beginning, you're going to hate it in the middle. Add and then they're going to get it. It's going to end quick. Add having to see, we're not supposed to see each other for 24 hours. That's not supposed to happen in a relationship. Well, why not? We're not. We're not designed to sit in each other's faces for 24-7. Somebody's gonna get choked out, either verbally or physically. So we had to do that. You can hear the studio audience. They all, do you guys agree? We're not supposed to be up in each other's faces. <laughs> Maybe, I heard a comedian say 12 hours and two of them awake, the other 10 sleep. But that's why I'm, I'm glad just, Lena got a corporate job. <laughs> See? Listen, I'd be oh, like, that's nah. how you feel too? Yes. Well, no, I, I just think you need time away from each other. You know what I'm saying? You need yes. to have your own friends, different things you like to do, your own interests, because like even my mother, bless her heart, you know, once she retired, mm -hmm. she was so busy trying to do things for my dad and she didn't have certain friends that she had she grew apart from, because they like, all she gonna do is if, if, her, if her husband calls, she gonna bounce or do this. Oh then God. you get older and you don't have interests. And I always didn't want that in a relationship. You gotta have other things you like to do, because we are going to get on each other's nerves and need space. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you need that space to want to miss that person. And I don't mean like be just gone, but sitting, I got married during the pandemic. So I got married and you had mask on at your wedding. I had literally, I can only have 25 people. Initially it was going to be at least 250, but because of the pandemic, we had to break that completely down. And then nobody could sit next to one another, and there was a mask with our our names and wedding date on it on each seat. That was a blessing, though, because you need you, less people, less money you got to spend. No, it definitely did. Yeah, especially not in that reception. Yeah, and now, you know what? <laughs> I didn't even, I, I realized states, I states. wanted it small, and I didn't think that. I'm like, when Raymond and I came out engaged, the whole world, you know, was talking about it. So I'm like, oh, mm. we got to do this really big. We should probably do a show. But I got so in love, I didn't even care anymore. So mm. 25 was actually really dope. That's dope. It was very intimate. It was small. We saved money. And it just felt very personal. It didn't feel like a, a thing. It felt like a wedding. Mm. Did you sing at the wedding? No. You know what? I think that that was probably, until the reception, the quietest I had ever been. I was so nervous oh wow yeah i'm in the dressing room and all the the bridesmaids and stuff and everybody is having a good time but i'm kind of in a state of nervousness mm. and it was yeah it was a lot because it was COVID, so we're just right in each other's faces right. so all of those things that you were not authentic about initially are now coming to life. Now he has to help me take my wig off. He has to You used to double, you you used to double flush? You yes, used to double flush, now you don't off. double flush? Wait a minute, okay, so you gotta tell me about the double flush. <laughs> that mean, you know, you go in there and be like, yeah, there's a little residue left. I, yes, oh, I no. was anal like that. And that, that part, I probably played a, a serious role in. My OCD probably kicked in over time. And it's like, as soon as the garbage can is full, I want it out, no dishes in the sink. But yeah, it, that probably wouldn't have been a big deal had we been apart from each other. Right. But being this close, getting to know a person, married six months after meeting, six weeks engaged after dating. So yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. That sounds magical to me. What? Which part? The fighting? All of it. The arguing? <laughs> yeah. The OCD? The removing of my wig? <laughs> the him snoring at night? You didn't like him. I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved him. I just said, I just think that the pandemic didn't seem like it was up close and personal to you. Very much so. Because, you know, she would go to her corporate job and now it's like it was just different. But I had my studio was at, at the crib. I had built a gym in the crib. So I would find different things, uh, little spaces to get away. Mm -hmm. And that was my way of doing things. That made a difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. we built a man cave. Okay. And then he introduced me to smoking, so I was in the man cave with him. So I was he probably didn't I, like me. Got you. I was always cleaning up after him. And, got you. Yeah. The smoking then I started his shit. smoking his weed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you smoke? I, I mean, I, I, my mama smoked. My my brother. I could he not. He been about to give I, you an R and B I, answer. No, I, I can't. I, I just couldn't. Okay. Can the audience ask questions? Why not, Cole? Yes. What you what you want to ask? We got a great <laughs> studio audience, so yes. So the, that like you fell in love at the marriage so does that mean you fall in love more once you're together or were you not like 
What was it? It's well, like, did you not know that you were as in love before you got married? Or like you fell in love once you were already married and it you was got more time together? It was surreal to me. First of all, six weeks into dating, someone asked me to get married. I was like, I, I was like speechless at first. But depending on, at that time, I was excited because mm -hmm. it was Raymond, he was harmless. You know, I, I didn't feel like there was a threat there. I was 40. So I was like, you know what? You really are not going to take anybody else seriously mm -hmm. that you're dating. Because I was dating famous people because it was convenient at the time. You know, like when you're That's famous. That's what you're around. You're around Yeah, that. I was around that. They could understand my schedule. They could understand my job. They could respect it because they were of the same environment. So with Raymond, he was like the best of both worlds to me because he was a part of that sector because of the Netflix special. And then he also was a gentleman outside of that. Like he seemed just very, you know, laid back and he really is laid back. So I knew that I, I had great feelings for him and it felt good that he was reciprocating. He proposed. So then we moved together and then six months later or prior to that, the pandemic hit. The pandemic made everything seem so big. It was like you lived for a totally different purpose and your priorities, you know, switched up. Because people were just like dying and you didn't know. So everything that was in front of you, if you were into it, was important to you. So it's like, let's not wait to build up this big wedding. We're together. We're, we're in this house together. Let's be here and be married. Because I even ended up getting pregnant. So I'm like, let's. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the love was growing That's on dope. my end. That's dope. So at first I loved the pandemic. I was like, oh, I get to see my kids every day. You know, and I got my fiance and we're here. We're screwing in the garage in different places and stuff. We're hiding out. Yeah, you know, you had to find places to. Cause the house was was just my crazy. pandemic was way different than this. <laughs> I was all by myself. <laughs> no, then you have to find places or get creative. My well, shit was like. Well, there's nowhere you can find legend. when you got like, what was she about three at the time? There's oh, nowhere see, you she's great. A it's baby. different. Yeah. She's going to find you. Mm. <laughs> You know, you got the little, the little camera, and then she got to try to put it face down so I ain't got to look up and see my baby in the exactly, bed. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the pandemic was, that was tough. After a while, you, it wasn't a bliss. It was more so like, who is this? Are you really sounding like that at night in your sleep? <laughs> and he would look over at me like, who is dude? <laughs> Why does he have a face? <laughs> and it was me. And so I was trying to be like Cisco. I shaved my head and everything. You shaved like, your head Yo, without his permission. It was a new permission. That was another thing. Like you lose your independent state of thinking, uh -huh. and you you kind of not think for two people when you probably should. Damn. And I thought for one relationship and I shit. Walked okay. in there with a fade. Yeah. He was like, "Who is my boy?" Okay. Yeah. Yo, if Lena wants to shave her head, Aria. Without you, permission. Without your permission. What's your reaction? Well, you, what's funny is I would prefer that over weave. Oh. He, he's such I, an R&B Let me tell you why. He's so R&B. No, no, it's not even that. I grew up in a, in a hair salon. My mother did hair. She's a cosmetologist mm -hmm. by trade. But I remember when you had to go in this little secret room in the back with no windows and nobody knew. Now it's like, I got this hair for sale. What you Listen. need? I got, so I'm telling, I got this, I got this great A. You just cut off this little Indian girl. Yeah. What you want to do? Yeah. It was just different, right? So for me, I was just, that was just never my, that was just never my thing. Um, I understood that every woman wanted to play like there was Beyonce. Like Beyonce, she got appearance here and appearance there. So heat on her head, you know, every day is isn't healthy. I know that. Yeah. You know, I know that women used to go to, to the Dominican shop, spend $30 and their hair would be straighter than Oof. anything, right? Frog but. Hair. A lot of women start making the excuse of, well, just like Beyonce, no, you're not doing interviews, baby. No. You don't have that performance. Yeah. Let's not do that. Like, yeah. So I had to go back to the wigs because of my job. Exactly, because you got all these so, appearances. Yeah, but there's a lot of women that would use that as an excuse. And there's nothing against, look, I, if you like it, I love it. But for me and mine, <laughs> okay? But she probably got some covering her stuff right now. So then, we, which mm -hmm. I, I love it, baby. It's great. But if I prefer, you know, I, I, I would do the... Teddy Savalas, you know, but she got a big head though. I'm sorry. No, I yeah. have a big face. So my husband didn't prefer it. He, I'm like, it's all natural. Well, it grew back. It eventually, <laughs> actually, it grew back faster. But I guess it would be preference. But I, I should have probably discussed it with him. Uh, but honestly, if you, as long as the guy feels like you included him, he'd be like, do whatever you want to do, babe. Because I like my lady's hair, but 
I've seen it in everywhere. I've seen it with the Bob. I, I remember when she went to the wrong place and they damaged it and she had to cut it down. Yep. I remember when I left one time and came home and she had the little, the Chinese bangs that look like, what's the girl name where her head turned all the way around? Oh, uh, no. She had the bangs like the one time. Uh, no, what's the, no, like with the, the lady that was um, possessed. What was it? Chris Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Oh, oh no, no, what's that? Ain't Poltergeist. That's terrible. No, nah, you. I see you young. It can't. No, it's this. It's, ah, my, well, it's the like head. A, I can't. Whatever Bob it is, Volta? she had. She had the bangs, right? I came. I, I never forget. I came in from Oklahoma. I came in. I was like, what in the hell happened? And, and we laugh about it now, but you know, being. Well, growing up in a hair salon, knowing women express themselves with their hair, mm -hmm. I have to be okay with whatever she want to do. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you, you, you're you comfortable with. Right. And especially being in this industry now, and even though she's an executive, she's kind of the social, like this new thing yeah. that I'm still getting used to. Yeah. Um, there's Hell, she went to two events last night. So it's like, it's crazy. No, and she's really dope too. How are you moving into the world changing as an artist because everything that you guys did back then i'm sure you go in the studio you record it you put it out then you go on tour you tour it now you got to be so engaging well it's totally against the way i was taught the way i was taught is i would get something new and my mama would say hey, act like you ain't used to nothing they'll see it when you got it on or you don't need to show people they're going to be trying to break in here and take the shoes right. now everybody's flossing, but they really capping in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. They want to show you everything they have. And the only reason I even put on the little jewelry is because I'm here with family. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be on none of that, so I have to really reprogram myself. And that is another issue in my relationship because Lena taking pictures everywhere. She want to post everything. And I was Black Planet. You know, we putting right. in the area code and zip code to try to find some ladies in that Black city. Planet? Black Planet. Okay. That was the first thing. That's before MySpace, okay? It's so, way before MySpace. Right. Yeah. So, so that we have like a six, almost seven year age difference, and that age difference is the difference of social media like that. But That's I really true. feel like social media kind of makes you antisocial. It does. Because you go to concerts and people really got their phone up taping, so people that didn't pay can see. Listen, even with family events. That's a bad business decision. Yeah. You just paid your money, and instead of you partying with the people around you, you like, <laughs> your arms getting tired and shit. Yes. That don't make no sense to me. That's but it works. It is harder because, like, now, luckily, because of my discography and writing and doing different things in my past, mm -hmm. I can just put out music for the love of it. Right. But I understand the frustrations of artists because my core fan base doesn't have a way to get my music because let's be honest, the only reason, I don't want to get y'all mad at me, but a, a big reason it. that people are on social media is to be nosy and to look at other people's lives or what's no, going on or to buy tummy tea or some hair <laughs> or a hair bonnet or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Not to discover music. Right, so mm -hmm. I can't sell new music. It, it is frustrating to go do a sold out concert and no way to get my new music out to people, but I'll give that to cats and music. I, it, it revolves and evolves. So eventually, yeah. people can reintroduce themselves, come back out and find different ways and be creative. Until then, I'll just be working on Jack's album and we'll just be chill. Really? So there is not a different machine that could fix that just because that's the way it is now? No, there's machines, there's people in, in, in power that can put you in position. I, I'll say this, this is the problem. Clive Davis discovered us, one of the biggest music moguls Ever, yeah, right? Absolutely. And I could walk in his office and he would say, play the record. Let me hear a hit. If you have a hit, I can dress you up, I can put it in the right people's hands, and I can take care of everything. I remember when it changed, I went into a meeting and somebody was like, so what's your social media presence like? Whoa. What's your following? They didn't even need to hear the record first. It was like, so what's your following? And it was like, wait, what? You don't, I don't need to play the record first? And that was the issue I had. I'm, I'm totally, I'm not the dude in the club in the back with the linen outfit on with the, with the Jesus sandals <laughs> mad at the world because I'm quote unquote not popping. That's me. It's more like, <laughs> you know it ain't. <laughs> I'm just more like, there's so much talent and there's so many, uh, Jagged Edge put out an album last year, I believe, 112. Mm -hmm. All these amazing, Drew Hill, all these amazing acts right. putting out this new music. And I know it's disheartening when people are like, when you gonna drop something? We love y'all. You're like, well, I dropped something I last month. People don't, you, there's no way to get it to them. And lastly, because I don't want to go on, on a tangent. No, go. No, with, radio, with, with radio, DJs used to be the ones that go, I'm going to hit you to something new. Yeah. And then you knew they played it at 5, they're going to play it at 6.30, let me go back and listen to the station. They would introduce you to new music. Now there's playlists, strict playlists, and they can't. Right. And 
the only new music, and I love Tank, that's, that's bro, mm -hmm. the only new music to me that they play on Urban AC sounds older. It does. So there's not really a place for legacy artists like myself because in our community, they consider us old. I hate to say it, it's the Ciroc mentality. Mm -hmm. That's why Ciroc has to keep coming out with new flavors. Wow. Niggas, the niggas' span so is like, date. that was last week. What, right. yeah, what you got this week from it? We need the watermelon mango now. Yeah. Where in other cultures, it's like, oh, just give me a Jack and Coke. My grandfather's grandfather's grandfather drank that. Keep the we we throw like each that. other away. And then yeah. at the funeral, it's like, oh, my God, I love him so much. But and in I life, can't you believe didn't show it. it. Exactly. Yeah. It was te they was teasing Whitney. They was teasing her. And instead of a lot of that probably would have saved her if they would have embraced her and showed her love and made her realize her greatness and who she was. Well, I think that's a blindness on the culture. Yeah. Because when, and not to put anybody out there, but it's just factual, when Lindsay Lohan would go through something or even Britney Spears or one of these other artists, Demi Le the Lovato, Lovato yeah. they would go, their culture would go and grab them up. I believe Justin Tom Bieber. Hanks. Justin Bieber got canceled for a minute. Yeah. He went back like, okay, that's quite all white. Let me go back over here. He was trying to be with Lil Wayne and them. He went back doing that EDM stuff like, uh, uh. It was a rap. He was yes. back. back because they backed their culture. So I think that that is <laughs> yeah. us. When he saw we was haters, he got the fuck off. He was in Miami. I think some shooting happened or something happened. He was like, oh my God. I'm, he yeah. first was like, I'm what, so up, white. what up, dog? Then I don't want to oh be a real God, nigga I'm, no more. I'm just Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it switched up quick as hell. And yeah. I ain't mad at that, though. This but shit we don't have that comfort nigga. thing yeah. that we can go back to. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, we supposed to be like mama house or grandmama house. Right. You, you, I got my girl kicked me out. You know, you, baby, you know you always got a place here now. We should be like that for each other. And I'm not saying w some of us aren't. But, you know, I'm, again, I'm from Minneapolis. You know, with the, I remember flying out, meeting with the, um, the, the police uh, chief about the George Floyd situation, all that. Right. I've, I've been seeing all these things and I love how we come together. Right. I just wish it wasn't just during tragedies and stuff like right. that. No, that's absolutely right. Do you think the music is saturated? Yes and no. I think that because of technology, um, what happens is talented artists come out before they're ready and they might hit a lick, which, which means, okay, now they, they got like a record that's banging out, mm -hmm. but now you got to follow that up and you ain't really Honed your skills. Honed your skills and got yourself how you need to be so you're not even ready. Or they come see you live and they're like, whoa. Oh, shit, yeah. So this I think different. there's a lot of great talent. It just hasn't been seasoned like it should be. Mm. And you can't be mad at that. Somebody at the crib and they bought a beat off YouTube or something and, and they and they hit a lick. You know what I mean? Think of Panda, Panda, Panda. This dude in real estate now. He getting, he getting paper. You think of... Uh, uh, what's Is that the, what he's doing? Designer doing real, real estate? All, all gold, everything. What's his name? Trinidad <laughs> James. Trinidad James, same thing. Wow. So... I don't even call it one hit wonders. I think that's disrespectful. I think that they, they took an opportunity and a, a level of success and went and done, and they did other things. That's greatness to me. And right. I think that that's what we've always been. We've had an ingenuity to find ways to go, okay, let me take this and use this to go over here and do that. That's why there's no, I'm not a hating nigga, man. Listen, right. if you can get it, get it. Get it. Yeah. However it is, if I can go on on, on a microphone, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, sing that shit over and over again and feed my family, I'm mm, doing it. Yeah. I, I'm with that. Who, who shocked you? Did Cardi shock you? No. Did you think she was going to have the longevity she had? Yeah, only because she didn't care. Get, get her teeth fixed. She, when, when she was twerking outside dude's jail and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, the truth is, there are, we talked about your greatness. It's all about putting it in the right position. And, and like we said, we don't do enough of telling you, no, you better than that. Mm -hmm. Or you got something. And, and you season it and you, and you work on it. You get the right people around you. I guarantee you, if you see who was around Cardi at that time, mm -hmm. they could put somebody else around them, same people, and there would be greatness. It's always about that village. I do believe that. The team. Yeah, like Kim. I think without Chris, I think it would have been different. Mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian, I think her mom. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the black dude with the bald head. Oh no, that was my guy. He from where I'm from. I, he from Minneapolis. Yeah, Chris Humphries, the dude, the, the, the dude that she was married to first. He yeah. From, uh, well, oh, second. Oh, she I'm married to second. That about was her second husband. Yeah, yeah, cause Damon from the Underdogs was her first husband. Shut the front door. Uh -huh. Okay. So, but I think that there's a team. I'm still alive. That's <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh, huh. <laughs> Got you. I'm, I'm thinking about, talking about, talking about mama. I can't stop loving you. No, not Kim. 
The okay. artist. Oh, you talking? Oh. The other artist. <laughs> I, okay. The I, other artist. I, I got to get out more. Kim, you know what? I really think that Kim is, is great in her lane. I think that she people will say, well, what does she do? I think she's done a whole lot. Oh, Me yeah. Too. She good at being her. She, yeah. she took the internet and, like, listen, made a whole channel. She's a whole brand. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not, you can't. She's a business. Is, the son, okay, my son is in the marijuana industry, right? Mm hmm. And, uh, shout out to your at son. First, yeah, but at first I was like, wait, what's going on with this? I remember he, he had got like, you know, locked, sorry, son, got locked up for a hot second, like 30 days. Like, it was funny. That really was But, a but hot literally, second. he just hit me up like that. I, can you pay off my car? I'm like, okay. All right, I'm going to send, because he lives in Phoenix. He gave the cash to his uncle, 20 bands. Take this to my dad. Like, he now he's a boss, like legally. Wow. And, I, and just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's wrong. And, and I had to learn that because, mm -hmm. again, I don't smoke. Right. But I'm a my, I'm a family of smokers. I used to steal my brother's weed and sell it. You? No, not at all. Oh, okay. no. But I think a lot of times we limit ourselves she because it's something we don't understand and we and we hate on it. Like right. that's automatically what happens. People right. have been hating on wifey for years. Like the song really? wifey, they hate on it. Like I've heard people go, "Why got to be wifey? Why can't it be wife?" Well, why don't you ask me, nigga? I wrote it. No, ask me what it means. No, they hate what, it on what, the name. What's the difference between a wife and a wifey? It, it, you want to know? Yeah. It takes the seriousness out of it. No, not, no, it, not really, because I, I had a lot of people in the hood that was like, listen, my old lady got good credit. <laughs> I don't want to fuck that up. Um, I can't afford the ring that she deserves, or I got to get my shit together. But in my heart, there's nobody else. She's my wife. That's wifey. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the only thing that was missing was a piece of paper. That's all it was. It's a ghetto marriage or, right. or a marriage of saying, like, look, you deserve more. And I'm going to be more, right. but right now, I don't deserve you as my wife. Right. And that was the, the vision for the record. But people are like, well, why is it got, I hate that song because it's, why can't she be wife? Well, really, all I'm saying is, baby, I'm not good enough yet. Right. But I, I think that they, I people heard are a critical. song about Candy and I was in love with it. It was called Laffy Taffy. I don't know if you <laughs> yeah, remember. of course. Like, I, that was about girls shake that laffy taffy like it I, it was a song wifey i thought it was dope i uh, thank you i but, thought but it said exactly are, what people, it meant but people um in a I lot of ways it was about laffy taffy <laughs> no it was about a butt and he get the fuck he, out of here that laffy taffy i didn't uh -huh. know that you, you huh? wanted somebody to really shake some candy yeah i was buying a lot of laffy taffy <laughs> this dude is a fool song. man no. i really was yeah so did you think wifey meant wife yeah i did Thank you. I always want, like he had said earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm a relationship guy. I always wanted to be in a relationship. So, you know, if, if whenever I got a, a chance to be in wifey or wifey-esque situations, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely uh, took advantage. Yes, you did. Really? Yeah. One. You did? <laughs> <laughs> so their music yes. was influential to your behavior. Man, 100 <laughs> percent. That's why we need that music back. Yes. You, man, one, hey, listen. No, but you know, wait, stop. Because yes. it's there. You can't say back. We need it in the forefront. Because again, there's a lot of great music, a lot Do of it, artists. Yes. No yes. disrespect. And you just need it to be in the forefront. More so, but present. I agree. And, you, and that's what I meant. I, I think that we forget and i don't forget on purpose because if like what's what's in your car right now if i turned on your car what music comes on i'm gonna sound vain Go it's yours it. it's music that you ain't heard before because if I, I have to listen to it over and over again because if i don't like it or if i can't like it after hearing it over and over again then you ain't never gonna hear it so but it's why really wouldn't you uh, always but, but listening to my you? new stuff but no but that's with a purpose what uh -huh. are you listening to for entertainment Probably, ooh, uh, Watch this. classic stuff. Come or on now. Cla just cla oh, Come on I now. do listen to some new stuff, yeah. but like the what? truth is a lot like of what? new Lucky Day, uh, there's a, um, mm. what is her name? Oh my goodness. I just Tiffany Gaucher. I just should have Lucky Day before we got here. Listen, that's like- uh, I Kenyon, think what is his name? Kenyon, oh my God, oh my gosh. He just came up with an album called Closer. I cannot remember his name. There's a lot of great artists in, um, What's, what's funny is... Did he perform on BET? I think he did. He did, yeah, I just he, bought he, that too. He, he sang with, with Usher background. Um, Vito. There's a, there's a lot of great acts that... Eric that, Bellinger. Eric Bass, my little bro. That's there's a lot of cats that were behind you know, the scenes. he got 29 fucking albums. Yo, I believe it. All he 29. does all day long is music. Yeah. And then but, a lot of the albums are long because he's he's a music guy. Right. Yes. All day long. Talented. But you already know I got three, four hundred records at the crib. That's all we do. Like when you when you love music, you just create. So But why why don't why don't more artists release like Aaron Bellinger? Eric he's self-contained. He created a fan base with social media and doing mm -hmm. different things. He's in a generation 
or a generation after mine, if not two generations after mine, to yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. he it. can take advantage of a lot of the things that my core audience, I can't say all of them, but a lot of my core audience don't necessarily utilize. Yeah. So he's mastered that. He, he can go on tour and do different things and him, he, he did a tour with Sammy, who I love. Yeah, he did. He was and, great. And th those things are amazing. I think he's, he's one of the most talented He's just because I started a music video. He wrote a song about me called oh, So Delicious. Oh, or Delicious as Fuck. And oh, so I started oh, a video. But oh. he's just a creative mind. like, And so, yeah, he, but to me, I think he creates those lanes or opportunities. Because he he's a, a thinker like that. Hey, what's up, what's up, man? It's your boy Jack Thriller, man. Hey, it's another oh. segment of Love According to Music Soul Child. Yo, music, um, you know, I'm, I'm really big on if um, a woman wants to actually go out on a date with me, because I'm not mm -hmm. really a date guy. Okay. But if you, you the one brought it up, mm -hmm. I feel like she should pay. Whoa. Am I tripping? I'm not going to say that you're tripping, because I don't know what your financial situation is. I don't know what your upbringing looks like. So I'm, it's not my place to say that you're tripping. However, I think this is also kind of like the whole engagement thing um, that we talked about before. Um, there is just certain, you know, and I, it's, it's certain words I don't like to use because of what, uh, what, what it, it, it's gotten associated with, but I can't think of any other words, so I'm just gonna talk regular. So there's this concept of roles. There's this concept of expectations of positions, whatever, whatever thing you wanna put on it. Um, that has just been a, a tried and true and traditional conventional thing that has happened. Um, and if she brought it up, I would, me personally, I would take that as that's just her communicating what she likes. She likes to go out on dates. She likes to be, you know, wine and dine. She likes to be, you know, fed and, you know, she likes to have a good, have good conversation. She likes to have a night out. She likes to have time out and be seen and enjoy being in your company under those circumstances. Um, but I think it also should be understood that in no way, in no way she's saying that she's willing to pay for it. That's why she got you. That's what she's expecting out of you. Now, there is a reality of the fact that, okay, if you want something and I can't afford it, are you willing to go in on it with me? You know, that again, that needs to be a conversation. Um, and then and you'll also find that with that, a lot of women, you know, I don't I don't, I don't at least I don't know of a lot of women that's going to like go along with that. Then again, maybe now and things are changing. Maybe nowadays, you know, women are more willing to do that, you know. But again, if you'll find that everything that I say always goes back to having the conversation, talk about it. You know, it's not fair to just assume a person is okay with something just because you want them to be okay with it. You know, and, and you may say some things, but it didn't hone in on the point that you were actually trying to make and you didn't understand that they understood what point you were trying to make. So have the conversation, bring it up. If you don't feel like it was understood, bring it up again until you get some kind of confirmation. Like, okay, okay, I understand. You know, and I don't always have to be like that annoyed, but I'm just being extreme to say, unless you know, you know, by a number of factors that that person understands you, you shouldn't assume that they get it. So you shouldn't operate as if they do. Saying that to say, um, I think you just don't have no money. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Okay. And, and I think you don't want to spend no money, which is probably why she has to ask for the date. Because your thing was, I ain't trying to spend a whole bunch of money. But then you should expect her looking at you like a broke ass, you know, wasting my time as why are we even doing this ass, face ass. And, and I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. That, but everybody not. 100%. Um, you know, I did just like, I think it was last night, actually. Okay. Young lady, um, she just asked me out on a picnic, and I'm like, who the hell I look like, Yogi Bear or something? I don't, <laughs> and they've never been on a picnic, and I'm supposed to plan the picnic, too, and whatnot, and it's not not really my thing. She expected you to plan it? She picked me, she want to go on a picnic, mm -hmm. and then want me to plan, I don't know, what, what even you even have a fucking picnic at? What? <laughs> okay, well, some some people, some men, um, 
they will take the, you know, the expressions of a woman as an opportunity, even a challenge to sort of like rise to, you know? So she may come from the reality that, well, if I just say what I want, the man that I'm with, is going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And some men operate that way. Some men don't. Some men are, okay, how do you expect this to happen? And how much of this I got to pay for? And what exactly is this going to entail? Have you thought about this? When are you planning on doing this? Do you know what kind of time I have? Do you have any time? You know, you know, I got allergies. I don't even like being outside like that. Bugs be all up in your food. Why would you do that? We can go to a restaurant. So again, you got to have those conversations. You got to find out what person that you're, that, that you're with. Are you even the picnic type? Does she know that if you were or not? I had already told her I'm not the dating type. And she still wanted a date out of you. She still want to go on a date and whatnot. I'm like, man, listen, if you Did you communicate to her why you're not the dating type? Uh, I, I told her, hey, I'm, I'm blind. I don't really like going out in public. I got you. Bumping into shit. And okay. I don't trust you like that. I just met you. Got you. You know, got and you. I'm not used to, let alone walking around blind. And you've expressed this to her. Yes. And she still wanted to date. Yeah. So she oh, like okay. she think I'm bullshit mm. because, you know, I move around so effortlessly. No, totally. I understand that. Like, you've just gotten so good at being able to Taking, navigate yeah. through life. Right, I got right, that. Right, right. And that kind of misrepresents, you know, your challenges. Right. I, I get it. Trust me. Right. I have my own version of that. So I get it. And, and, and keep in mind, when you when you are, uh, it's one thing for uh, the, the company not to uh, to match the feng shui, but when it doesn't match the feng shui, when you're inside of a unique situation like mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. and you get uncomfortable, yeah. it's a lot of anxiety comes in and then you start to feel so unsafe. So either, you know, she's willing to be receptive to what you're saying, you know, and be willing to work with you through that. You know, and that takes a lot of it takes a lot of consideration, a lot of compassion, a lot of care um, that I don't think a person would just readily have on tap, especially if y'all don't really know each other, you know, um, or I suggest you get out of there, buddy. Yeah. I Take think your I'm exit. Gotten, yeah. Take your exit before you end up somewhere you don't want to be. Stage left. Yeah. And I don't know where I end up because I can't see where I'm going. OK. Right. Yeah. I'm Jack Thriller. This has been a, another excellent segment of love, according to music. So, child, I'll see you next time. Or you'll see me. Yeah, we'll be right here. But if, if more people of the masses knew that your music was just available, they would buy it. Because I buy a lot of stuff, believe it or not, artists that are not considered mainstream or on the radio, when I listen to Apple Music, the moment that I hear a song, because I love music all day long in my house, if I hear something I like, I say, add that. But, and Syria added I'm, I'm to my you, I, I think you 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 did something for me for a record I released. I a loved it. Years. Yeah, for but and that, that's the hard part. It was playing in Victoria's Secrets, all type of stuff, but people don't know. But so the yeah. hard part is me putting out a record on Friday and then Tuesday, someone like, yo, man, I love you. We gonna drop something new. That's the hard part to where you have to put it out for you and because you love it. Yeah. But you you can't expect that same success because truthfully, you do need a machine mm -hmm. because that's what your audience expects. You can't yep. put out a video shot on an iPhone 4S now because they're going to think you fell off yep. because of how it looked before when you were here before. Initially. Mm -hmm. Even though a lot of them, believe it or not, shoot music videos with their phones. Yeah, yeah. Which is dope. I've seen that. That's, the, that's what's so dope about these younger artists utilizing technology and all this, these different things. There's an advantage and a disadvantage to that. We talked about the oversaturation of the market and then mm -hmm. how Drake can put out an album and then a month later, like, okay, what's next, bro? Like, okay. I remember an album would come out and I might go, okay, I like number three, number five, number eight, and number 12. Right. But then I might have, you know, have one of those smell my finger moments with a young lady in the car with the pull out stereo mm. and she, we was playing number three or number two. And I'm like, ooh, that's, I love that record now. Right. Or you might be with one of your girls and she'd be like, you don't like number seven? Bitch, you need to listen to number seven. See, that's and you're like, oh shit, that, and that is, that's, I do like that. Like. So music could grow on you now. Yeah. This album came out now next week. Five more albums are coming out. Five more albums. So 
I don't think that That's a lot. artists are getting the opportunity for their music to cultivate and people to appreciate it. So there's a lot of great music coming out that you just don't hear. Are you, do you like Fuck Nigga Free? Who is that? Um, Glorilla. Oh yeah, that's that new that that, that artist. I, 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 I do. The problem is this, and, and I and I say this yeah, about a lot of music. Spell. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, that's true. That's true. But the issue I have is this with a lot of new music. Like, all right, I put out a record talking about my penis getting hot on the dance floor, Ooh. and it took a long time. Too close. That's what it's that about. Was, that is what but, that meant. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's the lyrics? Uh, step back, you're dancing kind of close. I feel a little poke coming through mm -hmm. on you. That's uh, what she. That's what she said, yeah. That's what you meant? Yeah, well, well, well uh, <laughs> baby, us dancing so close, uh, ain't a good mm -hmm. idea, cause I'm gonna want you now in here. The way that you shake it on me makes me want you so bad sexually, oh girl. And, but how many people was that now, do they dance now in the clubs? I don't know, but I know we was trying to. I did not was, know you said poked. I thought yeah. you said a little more. So I'm, I love this moment. Okay. This is lyrics by RL. <laughs> I think you should do one of those with your songs where you just totally just acapella doing lyrics. Because I'm it, not going to purposely be like, I feel a little <laughs> poke. I'm doing a TikTok tonight. So if it goes thank viral, you, it's because you. I want people to know that you said there was a poke coming through. And I said and little. how do you feel about that? I said that little, though. I, I fucking love it. But look, I said, <laughs> but look, I said little because cause I got on draws. Like, they'd be like, why you say little? Because I'm constrained. But they always ask, boxer like, well, why'd you say that? Like, boxer briefs. I'm not going to go that deep when I post it. I'm well, going to make I... it very <laughs> salacious and just as Thank disgusting you. as you were thinking when you wrote but, but, it. But, but, but fuck nigga dope. free, my thing is, you want to be able to have your record played everywhere all the time. You know what I mean? So eventually she'll have to come up with something else that, not necessarily commercial, mm. but has a little less. Because now, I, how many times you had a record on the radio and they, uh, fit, uh and they got to beep out the certain words. So I think it's a great hood anthem and mm -hmm. it's going to grow. And I, I hope she blows up and then she'll do like Cardi Cardi. All of a sudden she was straight, you know, with the boy, the Bodai Black and all that. All of a sudden it, she it came was, with some records that just took her other places. It became commercial and would not, without disrespect. Pepsi. It, it, was, Pepsi, it was commercial. She's straight Pepsi. Yeah. And I want to see that for all these young artists because corporate she America is coming for that. that? What? Super Bowl, all that. You didn't oh, what? Man, I, yo, I be under a rock. That was back when she did the Bruno Mars uh, yeah. song. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, who was that? Uh, Julian and Michael, them over there. Got, that's their girl. That's what you want to see for all yeah. these artists. You want to see them get as many bags as possible. Because I don't know how residual income is going to be now for a lot of artists. I think that we were a lot of... I can't say all, but a lot of our groups were the last of the publishing mm. to where we'll, records will be played for a long time yeah. because, of, because of the attention span of the newer consumer. So they have to go get that corporate money, which is the beauty in the game. But is that still putting them in debt? No, because you're getting, you just getting a check from a whole different entity. You get if you get Pepsi money, that has nothing to do with a label. Oh no, I, okay. So you mean like the? I didn't. I thought you meant the labels. Oh no, I'm talking about the artists. They're empowered now. That's the beauty of it. Right. You know, I mean, the machines have nothing to do with this other money a lot of times, and that's what's so great. Corporate America is seeing the black consumer is super important now. They didn't oh, like that. Absolutely. You know, it used to be uh, Barry Manilow. <laughs> now it's Cardi B, it's, which is the beauty of it. So right. I want to see that for uh, Glorilla and all that. That's, that's what you want. You want to see the glow up. You know no, I mean? absolutely. Because I can't listen to it in the car with my kid. Like some of the music you're looking to wait to see if your kid says the, you know, the curse words. You, or you, be, you be waiting on them to say it. No, because I, I don't, I be wanting to say it. Oh, you so want to say I it. I know that my 12-year-old wants to say she's gotcha. fuck nigga free, but I dare you. Okay. So it's like, but damn. But I, don't I, you I want her it. to be fuck nigga free? No, she's definitely fuck nigga free because she's living under me. So she's going to be fuck nigga free, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But <laughs> do I really want her to want to say that? No, right, but exactly. I understand that it is what's popping. So it's like, God, mom, you're policing my, you know, my urban Creativity, connection. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you know? want to, but that's my point about the artist. You want them to have that urban connection, but you also want to see them evolve and not necessarily sell out, but you want them to have more. Yeah. Because again, the industry will spit you out. And if you can have other opportunities, like we call these cats disrespectfully one hit wonders, like Trinidad, like you said, mm -hmm. and they find these other lanes to do other things. Look at Rihanna. Uh, she wow. had a lot of great Fancy. records, but now she yeah. don't even have to. She like, do I want to do she an album? She don't even like people asking that question. Right. 
Because she's a businesswoman. Like, so if you're using music as, as a vehicle to do other things, mm -hmm. That's the beauty of how the game is now. So I love that. No, that is dope. Because back when we were coming out with the Flavor of Love, they boxed you in. And if you tried to step out of that box, then, you know, they kind of cornered you and said, mm -hmm. no, we know you for this. Stay over there. Mm. Like you had to just do reality TV. You what did you want to do? Well, I was, I got into doing my music a little bit. I knew that I had the talent, but you got to. You've been holding back. What it is, is if your audience is really not receiving it the same way, and then the machine, like he said, they're not valuing you. So they, the machine is putting us in this one spot. At one time when our, we were out, it was all about magazines. You got to remember Smooth Magazine. Right. I love Smooth. Um, I forget. King, yeah, I was yeah, friends with the lady. Black Men Magazine. All yeah. of these magazines were out. And so if you were on the cover of these magazines or even on these pages, then that was the thing to do. But yeah, I can sing or I can act mm -hmm. or I can dance or, you know, I'm mm -hmm. creative. But that's what they I was wanted a, I had you a to do. deal for rap first. I was a rapper. I had a really? record offer from Maverick Records as a rapper, and I had to make a decision early on that I want to be a rapper or a singer. And a guy at a studio I worked at, uh, who I looked up to, was like, yeah, you should um, probably rap. And I thought that meant he thought I wasn't good enough to be a singer. So I made the decision right then and there. Now, I'm, I'm going to be a singer then. I'm Just because of you. the challenge. Oh, you uh -huh. went against the grain. You yeah, went, but yeah, I was a rapper. Bro. Even I, I, I was a, a rapper. Dead, Easy wow. hands. That's yeah. why I write songs really fast. Because um, you, you got that... Quick. And he mm -hmm. writes fast. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. So do you write for other artists? What? Yeah, a lot. Uh, like, I, I, just in case and anything for Jaheim. That was like such a big song. Yes. Yeah. He had a couple on Jaheim. Uh -huh. Then he got on um, Ideal. Yeah. Um, Luther, Usher, Jamie Foxx. Luther. Yep. Lloyd. Yep. I got records on a lot of people. Yeah. He danced with my mother again. Oh, you're that so humble. No. No. It no. <laughs> Dance with my father. I was on that album. It was. it was on that album, oh, though. It was oh. on that album. So, <laughs> Dance yeah, but... with my mother. It was with my father. Are you into politics? I didn't want to say it. <laughs> You know what? That's um, what my mom better. Rather. More so now. Um, I remember when I was younger, they thought I was going to get into politics before I decided to just focus on music. When I was, you know, in high school, I remember they had me speak in front of the city with the mayor and things like that. So that was something I thought about. Um, but I hate politics because I see. Well, I hate the idea of politics because I see it in the music industry. Mm. It's mm. like because you're this and I'm that, we can't agree on something. Even if I agree with you, I can't agree with you because we on separate sides Sounds of the aisle. That's whack as hell to me. You mean like the red and the blue? Exactly. So do you have friends who are red? Um, I probably do. They just probably don't say anything. I'm sure there's conservative people because there are certain... The truth is, the more successful you are and the more money you have, in certain instances, you... You have to be conservative because they're really for making money if you have money. But again, I still have people in the hood. Right. So my concern is them. Right. A perfect example, when, when Biden came in, he's talking about we're going to tax you on um, cash app and all that over 600. I'm like, don't play with my that money, nigga. Crazy. Hold up right. now. Yeah. I voted for you, baby. Like, right. come on. Hello. Like, don't play. Like, let what me keep my about? little coins. What, what was that, that about? Yeah, yeah, man, listen, man. I, I was like, wait a minute. What are we doing here? Right. Did you did you think that that was the best move for us, though? I'm I'm against bigotry and racism. I I really feel like I I feel like Trump was in in place so that we could see who really was. Or we can see people for who they are. Because a lot of bam, people bam, came bam, out of the world where that you thought was super cool. That you thought was like, oh, we cool. But he, or they just looked at us, oh, he's one of the good ones. You know what I mean? So right. you realize, wait a minute, you're this how you really are? Yeah. Oh, damn. So I think some things happen to bring things to light. And again, we unify whenever there's... I, I, I knew Biden like was that. some bullshit. You did? Yeah, his politics was just so vague. Hey man, I'm gonna make sure everybody gets some pussy. I'm gonna make sure everybody, you know what I'm saying? The body, my house. Blame, I don't blame him. I'm gonna tell you, this is the messed up part. Same way I get mad when we blame Barack for not doing certain things. This ain't a dictatorship. These yes. are kings. So what happens is you blame that one dude from like Arkansas and Mississippi, uh, Mitch McConnell, that's his name. Oh my goodness. You gotta blame him because what happens is stuff has to go through the Senate in the House, and I don't wanna go through all the whole. Uh, They're so government. divided though. Yeah, but what happens is. They'll anything that Barack brought up that he fought for that he wanted to do for us. Yeah. He he he's literally on record 
on camera like, anything he brings, I'm going to shut it down. It's not going to make it through the center Him, of the Ted house. Ted Cruz, all of them. All of them. They were totally against it just to be against it. And they're doing that to Biden, was. too. And yeah. that's why we're fighting like Republicans don't play fair. No. So they want really we're at the point where like Democrats, you need to do it. Filibuster, do this, do that. Right. But, but if we, we know that, but if we know that, right, like why, why are we even going against the grain? Well, like for instance, we, we we just created the inevitable. You you let let's be honest. We know Trump getting back in the office. He's no, not. He not, he not. I don't think that don't that's going to so. happen. But why do you do you think that we're going against the grain? One hundred percent. Um, I I just I just didn't feel like this whole this whole um. I, I didn't understand Biden's politics. I didn't understand what he said he was going to actually do. There was nothing that was uh, that, that 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 stood out. He just said, "If you're black, you should vote no, for he, me." No, he, and, he had a whole economic plan, a bunch of things. Uh, uh, I mean, laid out where there's one mansion or mansion Democrat in like Rhode Island or Maine or something mm -hmm. to keep voting against him. Like, if there's this one Democrat stopping the game, yeah. and I really think he's a covert. Uh, Republican. <laughs> yeah, some so type of people want to blame the figurehead. Well, what, what I've learned from all of this is don't just vote when it's the presidency. Vote for Senate, Congress, because that's Absolutely. really what it is. Because that he doesn't, he can't fully control. Hey, how many of them. us really do that though? We, we, a, we say that problem. all the time. No, I do. I, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I would go in there, and I would. I think lately we've been presented with the lesser of two evils. Yeah. So I would go in there and I How long? Would How long have we been um, presented with the lesser two evils? Well, I don't think I that think, Barack was an evil. About the last Barack 30 years? No, no, I don't, I don't think, think Barack, Barack was, either. was an evil. I think Barack was a, a great choice, but you cannot No, I just think Barack was black. Not only was he black, that that was something for us that we were, that was coming. God was giving us that. So yeah. we're going to get that. But he actually did his job, in my opinion. But if you have- He a, inspired us. That too. But there are only so many things that he can do with a, a place that's in disarray. Because before you can start building, if you got sink and sand, you got to, first of all, stabilize that. Uh -huh. You got to get that together before you can start doing the things that make everybody smile. You got to take uh -huh. care of all the things where people didn't smile. So uh -huh. if you got a wreckage that you got to clear out, how do people expect you to start building when there's a wreckage right there? And then people, then the next president takes credit for the things that you fixed because it takes years. Like, I bet you yes. if we could sit down at a barbecue with Barack, you'd be like, man, those niggas, they, 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 listen, I tried to do all the shit I could do for you guys. <laughs> right. But I promised that Mitch McConnell, motherfucker, he, listen, you that Senate in that house, I try to pass these bills, That's I promise you. the funniest niggas you'll ever meet in your life. I, I, I promise you. I guarantee you sit at a barbecue <laughs> a and play some dominoes and, 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 and shit, pull out some Boone's Farm. Right. But Rock would be like, I prom me and Michelle, we'd, and be, in that, we'd be in that White House and I he promise you. He should do it. Uh, can, I, I though, wish he would. He'd get assassinated if that's something like that happened. That's what, we have to it remember be. there's a certain etiquette that yeah. we have to keep. Like, I wouldn't die for let's us be, Let's keep it 100. Yeah. If we, they keep talking about this Black Lives Matter, if we, we would have stormed the Capitol, it would have been mass I casualties. I all the time. Mm. But when you talk about the rednecks and oh. all these people, like, listen, it's just different. Did we you don't see get Four that Hours at the Capitol? Uh -uh. Did you did you ever watch the HBO special Four Hours at the Capitol? No, I didn't. I didn't know. Oh, my goodness. I swear, by the time we hit the grass, mm. they would have fired. Yeah. Boom. We would have never been able to storm the Capitol of the mm. United States of America, not even the ground. We wouldn't have been able to trample the flowers. Mm. Right. The way they went in there and totally disrespected the United States of America, our, our borders, everybody that's in charge of, of safety and arms or whatever, because you put them, you made them look weak. Mm. If anybody wanted to take over our country, that was the time that they would have been able to do it because they went in there and they totally disrespected and nobody stopped them. And you had our government, they were so afraid they were like putting them in this this holding area mm -hmm. because those people were marching at the tune and the command of our commander in chief. Actually, he wasn't because he was voted out. Yeah, but he was still he at concede. the time. He wouldn't concede. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we were at the mercy of him finally telling them to leave. But then we talk about gas prices and all these different things that really happened because there was nothing put in place with Trump because he was like, oh, COVID is just the, the Kung flu. It's going to be over. This is nothing. It's fake. This is, you know, false news, fake media. And all of a sudden, all these things, them checks that was given out, everybody's like, oh, I need my check. Right. We got to pay all that back. And 
so people are not thinking of these things, and we want to push the blame on somebody mine. we voted for. Wait, so you I got, got a check? How did you get a check? Man, I had got a few. But I got all of the checks. I oh yeah, no, got you got the right account, the right sense. people. I got one check for like twelve hundred, but I got I got the stimulus. I got the uh, PayPal. I mean the pay the PPP. Uh, uh, I got the uh, the all the unemployments. And what's crazy is that I got all that shit. Artists, we, we supposed to get them. I, I forgave. The I got legitimately. My husband that. and I. We were definitely qual- we qualified right. for I, I all could, of I don't those. even know how I got the st- I didn't ask for nothing. I, I just got like everybody a- was, was able to get the stimulus. Yeah. I was speaking on the, the PPP because mm-hmm. I believe I even got the A lot of people stimulus. went to jail. A lot of people went to jail because they was... Man, you you that's cut. You should have used my dude. You should have told me I would have hooked you up with my boy. <laughs> no, you know, they, they, had, they had the ASCAP had one, the songwriters. Songwriters <laughs> and people like that had one. And I was like, even Lena was like, you should write. And I was like, nah, I was like, I'd rather people that really need it Get it. And not saying I'm I'm balling like that, but I, I just felt that way. I could ever go back and do because I lost friends. Behind you can't that. never ball I, enough. I, no, let me tell you. No, I had friends who I was actually putting out money at that time during the pandemic. They told us two weeks. Remember, they said kids will be out of school for about two uh-huh. weeks. You know, Trump was like, "Yeah, this is the Chinese virus. It's not gonna stay." Uh-huh. Two weeks out of school. Two weeks became a month, and there was an instant panic. Uh-huh. And you know, you you no toilet that paper, you, no sanitizer. Yes, it was over. even if I had stocked up on baby wipes, so I was good. Yo, you couldn't even buy those more than one pack at the time. It, it was really bad. I, I stayed by myself. I had, like, you know what I'm saying, at least 15 packs of baby wipes. See, took I should have called you. Through the whole... No, don't call me. But for, no, I would have called for that. I needed them. I, I needed mean, them. No, we, we couldn't even buy <laughs> tissue. But listen, my friends, I, I we were giving out ass. money to people who may have needed it because it was really bad. People who had good jobs but didn't realize they were living check exactly. to check. Exactly. Because they were used to it coming in so much. Yes, they they did realize that they were just nigger balling. I think they were, no, yeah. no, no, no. I have a lot, even people I in the industry that friends. have to live off of shows when yes. that shut down. Like, luckily for me, I was blessed enough to have, like I said, publishing. Yeah. So I understand. There's no ego involved. Like people, when you got people around you struggling, like I always tell people, they be like, you, you, how's it feel to, to have made it? Right. Listen, my mama still need things. I ain't made it till I call my mama and say, hey, mom, how was your day today? That's good. Well. You're not doing nothing tomorrow. I ain't did nothing today. Well, you're not doing nothing tomorrow or the next day or the next day That's or forever. That's when you feel like you made That's it. when you made it. So I, I've, I've you, done no, pretty no, good, you're right. but I ain't you, made it. You're right. I heard Shaq talk about that and, you know, how he he's trying to he make sure he's can take care of all of all his the brothers women, and, and all the women in his life, too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was important. So when you find out later, them same friends that you kind of, they were getting check checks. Yeah. I was like, well, why y'all ain't calling me and Raymond and... Because so we legitimately are owed them checks. Mm. But no, I, I've seen people, they really went through big money. But I know people in time. the government, this, I know somebody that's in the government the is after that getting that, this, this getting sued and going to jail. People going to jail. <laughs> for real, for real. Y'all remember no, that Susu when that shit was going on with that? What is Susu? That, 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 like, uh, it's like a pyramid scheme. Susu. Oh, that, that game that they yeah, were playing. Yeah, yeah, that, that bullshit. Once you get in the middle, nah, nigga. I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you you, you, you got to do that shit like three times, leave it alone. Right, Susu, though. So that means when you put up 1500 and you get back ten thousand. Was this all on social media? It was kind. Of, it's kind of when like you get on social media. That uh, means it's time to get out. Oh, right. I think that's where I saw. But you had to be in a group. Yeah, it's like a. It's like a thing. You got to get to the middle of this thing, yeah. and then you cash out. I was like, yeah. I remember my guy asked real? me to get into it. <laughs> it was real, but I, my biggest fear is I'd be that one at the very end. It, it worked for all of us <laughs> except you, nigga. I'd have been hurt. <laughs> so there is somebody who has to lose. Yeah, um, oh, it's a, a lot, lot of people. people like, <laughs> I hey, I'm going to the casino. I would have never done. Yo, no, you, it you was supposed some, to win, but you got to get more people to put it in. It was some actors and shit that was hitting me up about it. It was on hit TV shows. Wait a minute. So this really was a thing thing. What? Yes. I thought this was my hood on was Facebook. Up. I thought it was, I remember something like this on Facebook. It was everywhere. Were, yeah, but I didn't think that it became like where people <laughs> I got offered, money. but I was scared. Listen, I done took so many L's and that might be where the, R, the L came from. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. uh-uh, that ain't gonna happen, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. say not off the susu. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I like I said. I, I, I made I made it to uh, like thirty thousand dollars, and I cashed out. They were like, "Hey, you got to put in another um twenty five hundred. No, I'm cool. Wait, you can make thirty thousand dollars. You can. You do enough games, and you yeah. get, and then people come in because people was really believing it, and like, oh, yeah. I can do that. I, I just got to work my way to the middle. Man, it, it's all like a like three card money. If you if you if I'm from uh, I'm not from, but I lived in New York where it's the home of the scam. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I, I already saw the jokes coming and shit. You know what I'm saying. So so I was I was when I when I heard that shit was um 
on a, a on a, a like social media. What was the objective? Get to the middle. Get to the middle. So ten people putting well, in. Is this a lollipop? Like, what do you mean? Get to the middle? Yeah, it's some Tootsie Roll. It was, pop like, it was like it was like like was this? It wasn't. It was like triangles or something that you got to or diamonds or something. You work yes. your way to the middle. Yes. So every time somebody would pay up, where if you're right here, you would move up. So then it, somebody else would pay up, and then you would work your way to the middle. You cash out, so then the next person. Yeah. And, Whoa, and you would just get in line. And yeah, get, money. get in line. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If so, but the what the way it works is. If you if you off the rip pretend like you t- like three different niggas, yeah, you got that's the only way you win. Oh, off the rip, you got to be three different niggas. To get in. Yeah, so that's thirty thousand. That's like thirty grand right there, because the, the fifteen hundred that you put in represents ten. Oh no, I'm not going for that. You, I got to give you fifteen hundred to start. You got to give fifteen hundred yep. to start. No. Uh-huh. I just want to make money. But you can make ten in the end. Like you yeah. make ten in the end, and in like Ten-G's? a week. Yes. How long do you got to stay in the game? About a week and a half. It depends, on, it depends on how many people come in the, in the game. Yep. Well, who lose? I would be the, I'm like, the last like, nigga. I would See? be the lose. Uh, the last niggas lose. God would have told me, don't That's what this. the RL, our loss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> our loss. That's what it would you When you hear your stupidest friend talking about the shit, that's when you don't do it. When you when, Remember when your stupidest friend got into real estate? Yes. When real estate was blowing the fuck up? Yes. And you, that's when shit started going yep. bad. That's true. But I, you know what? I'm into real estate, though. I mean, I don't sell it, but I would love to actually learn, get my real estate license, mm-hmm. sell house, especially out here in Atlanta. That's what I've been getting into now. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, w- I really want to do, you know, real estate. Mm. Get my license and that's dope. Do some stuff. One hundred percent. Then do that. Then so so. I give six months. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna be like, yo, how that, how that real estate stuff no, going? No, for real. Because... Hold me to it, cause I do interior design, mm. and I think that the two together, I could pay myself. I could be, you know, working for myself. So. There you go. I like what get you're doing. two checks. I'm gonna start just selling. Then candy. get a TV show. Then you could be on like HGTV. Well, listen. listen, because they have so many, and I'm stuck watching them. Mm. No, I don't see a lot of us on exact, there. Exactly. No, I see. Us like do you like for real yeah, like be everybody really think we should us. get this house? But yeah. I don't see yo dog. I'm telling you this, this right here, this yes. property right yeah. here. I'm telling you, man, we can flip this right here. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, dog, and we can get that. Look, we do that marble right there. Right. Yeah. I, I see I'm telling uh, Channing Crowder. Ch- Channing Crowder, he be doing it. Yo, and shout out to Kiana Watson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she's yep. out here in Georgia and, and she um, does it or um, Egypt. Egypt dude. Yes. Turner House. Yep. She's Yo, super dope. So proud. Yep. They got nominated for a major award. But one, just of my, one of my homegirls, uh, Brandy Hunter, she has one of the yes. biggest. But see, what's funny is she's from Minnesota. You just gave me chills. She's yeah, from Brandy. Minnesota. So I knew her since high school. She's wow. from Minnesota. Yeah, she was like the like big sis. She she played basketball. Yo, so it's she, money there. Yeah, I'm so proud of her. She won like the top real estate agents. Yeah, here. no, that's dope. You know, we have to talk about that. Yeah, New 100%. City. Yeah. New City, can Real estate coming soon? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So we're here with, you know, one of the biggest comedians. He's another one that's Oh, underrated. man. You, come on yes, now. He is. Talk that shit. Keep going. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you about the comedians. Okay. And I need your opinion. Monique mm-hmm. Dio. Wait, you said, so what's the second one? Two comedians. Monique and Dio. What do you feel about that? Um, I, 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 I look at it like a domestic dispute, and you always know when you jump in a domestic dispute, the person that gets hurt is the person that jumped in it. You ever heard that? Don't ever get in the middle of a domestic dispute. I feel like mm, yeah. if you are paid to talk shit, um, y'all going to be able to talk shit to each other. If I get in the middle of it, I'm not, I can't win. That's what they do. I feel like they'll work through it. They'll work it out. It's, it's disappointing to see because... I just made a post on Facebook because my brother does this. He's older than me. He's an mm-hmm. OG, but some cats that don't know how to navigate social media be putting all their business on there and mm-hmm. saying shit they shouldn't say, mm-hmm. not realizing even if you erase it, it's there forever. Mm-hmm. And I feel like some people go into these new platforms and this new technology and they use it the wrong way or they overshare. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think certain things you go on there and she, Moni go on there, hey to my babies. Hey, baby. From DL and blah, blah. And now you, now you can't take that back. Mm-hmm. And then DL goes on there, you know how I feel about that? You know, what really happened was I was the headliner, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, family business is out. Is in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know DL does this. He has his own, this is what he does. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just happy to see Moni get her, her special finally because she won a lawsuit, I yeah. guess, or they settled. Right. Um, so, Again, I'm not a hate nigga. I want to see everybody win. My favorite saying is, I wish you well. I just wish me better. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. So I want to see everybody win. Right. I want to win a little more. Of course. But I want to see all of y'all win. That's- Can they fix that? <laughs> I hope so. The problem is once it's out and, okay, you argue with your man at home. Mm-hmm. No, nobody know about it. 
Yeah. You argue with your man at home and you tell your girls, and all of a sudden everybody's judging your situation. You don't forgave, now they haven't. I know. I tell the world on March 1st, hey, my husband is a narcissist and I'm leaving him. Where was my friends at when I said that? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, uh, hey, I'm here now. But you get what I'm saying, though. You, oh, well, you, it's, you it's can't come back that. because one stuff is out in the public. Yeah, no, I meant that, though. I'm, I'm that, But that, you that love him. I, I do, but I, people didn't know my husband had already put it out. Put what out? That he was out. He left in February. I didn't tell y'all to March. But everybody... You act like a month is a long time. Yeah, because anything can happen, you can come back. Right. No, 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 you can't. Oh, you oh, you weren't going to let him back. No, 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 no. I don't... I, you know what? And I just want to make it very clear. I love my husband. I wouldn't have said I do if I didn't. But I think that there is a way. Having a situation to happen to you is one thing. But how you handle a situation is another. So there's a way to leave. And... There's a way not to leave. But how did he leave? The way not to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even in the same state. I was working. I was in a whole other state. And he, you came home and he was gone? Mm-hmm. That happened to me. Oh, my goodness. Are yes, I was in Cleveland was out on a show. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, w I was in the Cleveland on a show, and then I came back, and uh, my, my ex-wife had took... All of her shit and some of my shit and just dipped out. So would you rather be there to watch them leave you? I think that a lot of times you, you, when somebody what? care about you, it's easier to wait till you're not around. So I think that's because they know if they see you. You're being they a see guy, friend. No, no, no. What happens <laughs> is this. If I see you cry, oh, I got it. All you viewers out there. How many times have your, your, your significant, this is for my fellas, your lady did something to you. Mm -hmm. and she, she wrong? But you react, and then the situation becomes the way you reacted. You hurt her feelings by reacting to some shit she did, mm -hmm. but now you react, and now you hurt her by your reaction. So now it's about her feelings and not what she did well, that no, caused the, the, it. I'm, so, so why? Just why? So what happens is, guys, if he's a good guy, if he sees you're hurting, from, even if he's right, he's going to try to stay. So sometimes he may be, and I ain't make no excuses, right. but he might have waited for you not to be around because he didn't want to see you hurting. Because that was easier for him? I think that yeah. as a man, when you're married, the responsibility is not to take the easy route. It's to take no, the I'm right saying route. It was easier for him not because it was just easier. It was easier for him because he didn't want to see you Anything in pain. Anything that has the adjective easy in front of it when it comes down to leaving, that's the wrong person. Well, well, but never, let me ask you this. It's did never that, easy. that phone call in front of it, mm -hmm. did you say, well, fuck you then, nigga. Take your shit and get the fuck out, you no, bitch ass nigga. No, I didn't even know it was happening. So <laughs> I, I couldn't have, <laughs> no. I wouldn't have said that, no. I, what did you say? You know what? I, I think I, you, I was numb. Uh -huh. And I was in you shock. You do what you got to do. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I haven't talked nor seen him since February. No, I'm saying like so. the, the call when he was saying, I'm going to leave. He didn't say that. Oh, because I had a call. No, I didn't get a call. I got a call from my daughter who filmed the things gone and was like, mommy, and sent it to me. She couldn't call me directly because I was filming a movie. So she didn't want to interrupt me gotcha. while I was at work. Oh, wow. But I had to find out later and I looked at the right. video yeah, that's, and I that's, saw I, that I, I know it's huge. That's why, but I will say, sometimes in hindsight, when I look back at situations that didn't work out, mm -hmm. I can see signs that led to that. Oh, and I go, I okay, I get it. You're right. And not to cut you off, but I knew that we were going through the, you know, the conversation of separation. But... I felt like there was a way to do it so that we wouldn't bleed on people who didn't cut us and gotcha. that we wouldn't have, you know, including our children. We have three daughters sense. and then our fan base, our family. We have a, in my mind, I think that when we took on such a public relationship and a public lifestyle that we had the responsibility of the public. But I don't think that. In uh, a different way, not as a responsibility of, it's like, I just think that you need to do but you things know what? You've been in way. this game a long time. So you, there's certain things you understand. I think that a lot of us, whether it's broken homes, whether it's trauma from our past, mm -hmm. I always tell people, let go as much baggage as you can because the, the plane ain't gonna fly that high if you have a lot of baggage. But there's baggage yeah. you don't even realize in a relationship that's there. And if you can't find a way to help them unpack that, 
then things is gonna happen. Cause I have that. I have tr childhood trauma. I tried to kill myself my senior in high school. There's a bunch of things. I've dealt with low self esteem since I was five. So I understand. Really? Like, so when you say he left because he's a coward, maybe it's not that he's a coward. Maybe. I didn't say that, but somebody yeah, yeah, must have been thinking that. Right. Oh, may maybe. Okay, <laughs> right. Oh, oh, you know, you might be right. So let me not misquote you because I got <laughs> I, you. you but took the easy way. No, you, it the was easy the way. telekinesis because I was thinking right. it. But. Okay, but the easy way, mm -hmm. it could be a lot deeper than that. I, I think that we don't give oh, each other enough grace or try to look at different perspectives. I've learned to do that because I'm not gonna lie, being from the Midwest is two things. Mm. Um, saying nigga all the time mm, yep. and being skeptic of being skeptical of everybody. You know what? And I wish I had that. If I was skeptical, I probably wouldn't have been married. But I think that you're right about the trauma. I and mean, I'm gonna definitely ask you about five years old, insecurity, something had to be, but you were a middle child? Yeah, middle child. You're a middle child, so th I know that that plays a part. But having an insecurity that you didn't discuss with your wife and having it to play out later on in your marriage, that's hard if yeah. you didn't discuss it. So, uh, But I didn't. I didn't. There's something you don't go, you know, I really like you. Can I tell you about, you know, the time I tried to kill myself or the fact that, you know, <laughs> the world thinks this about me, but I don't necessarily think this. Like, there's some mm -hmm. things that come out in time and... A lot of times you have to love that person through it or yes. in spite of and, and, and that's the hard thing. That's Absolutely. the hard thing. Absolutely. But, yeah. but you got to give me you that room to leave. do that. No, but you don't ever leave. I don't think separation is ever the answer. Man, listen, every man, like I remember my lady used to be like, you always say you're going to leave. That's what every guy says. Oh, that's our, we're, we're, that was we the go -to. we're runners. Yeah. Like, we, I, my track shoes on right now. Yeah. My but ear. Do you it's actually, over. But do you actually physically leave? I'm not, no, no. Look here, yeah, bitch. I'm going to be right back. A lot of times I leave. I'm going to my mouth. I can deal with that. I would leave because I know that I might say some things that I can't take back because that's just what it is. Have you ever left to hurt her? It was a tit for tat. When someone no, takes I left because I was hurt. Like, no. No, I left my husband I was left because he knew the thing that I wanted the most was him. So that would hurt me. That's what, that's what makes you sleep at not, easier at night because that's probably not true. It's deeper than that. No, no, no. It, I mean, he has a... Re but that... At the time... If that's the case, he would have waited for you to come home. You're back. Mm -hmm. Good to see you, baby. See that truck out there? My shit's in there. I'm no, out. So that's not was, true. For, in my case, it was a greater impact for me to... Oh, you're going to go to work? Oh, you're going to take a job? You're going you're gonna to actually go and do that movie job? Bet. You left. I'm going to show you a bigger exit. So I went to work. And sometimes in relationships, um, and I'm guilty of it too, you do this tit for tat. Was mm -hmm. you forbidden from going to work? Um, he can't make or not, but I, I, I get what you're well, saying. Did he say that? Did you know but he you didn't know want you to he do means, that? Right? Did he know? Yes. Did he, he didn't want you to take the job? No, he didn't. Okay. He, didn't, he wouldn't have preferred it. But that wasn't a conversation that was given to me. Neither was it really given an option to him at that point, which is something that I'm learning now that I'm in a stage of being with myself, by myself. I'm realizing myself as well. I know I played a role in it, but I do know that this this separation wasn't something that I initiated. But... Sometimes when you're strong, people who don't feel like they are as strong feel threatened. Yes. So they find that the one thing that's so weak or they feel like is your weakness. And she, he's like, yo, she loved the shit out of me. And she knows that she loves me. And I know that. And even in the midst of it's like a Luther Vendraw song. I'd rather have hard times with you than I good times song. with someone else. Yeah. So I'd rather with, have hard times with you. That's some bullshit, though, because I don't want no more hard times. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. I used to say that. I'm too old now. Well, I, again, I, you know, I've met... Well, you know, I've met him before. I know. That's I, why I say yeah, you're right. being a bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah right no, I'm not, that's not even what I'm doing. What I, what I, what I want to do is always say, okay, he's not here. Because if we, maybe if you weren't here and he was sitting right here and we was asking him questions, he might have a whole different perspective. And that's what I always think of in situations. And things you wouldn't even go, you'd be mm -hmm. like, really? That's it? All you had to do was tell me that. A no, lot of things I is communication. No, I It was sex. I definitely know what it was. But it, did I say how I've been drinking? But no, I know what it was. But I didn't feel like it was a fair enough thing. What was the sex? Oh, you what? didn't think. What was the sex? No, and what? I still don't think that. I don't okay. think that. I, what I do think is what you said earlier. Okay. Date someone. If you're a hoe, date a whoremonger or somebody who likes hoes. If you are a saint, date someone who likes saints. No, that's not true because people in the church want freaks too. No, but if you want that, then date that. That's what, that, no, that, no, that's no, what no, my okay, point then, is. So why I feel like this. You want somebody that's a hoe for you. I'm no, it goes what, back to I'm special. So you no, don't want to be like no 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 no. I'm no, agreeing no. with you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
she, this is what she's saying, RL, and let, let's see if you can come here, if you agree. She's saying, if you like hoes and whatnot, get with somebody that like hoes with you. I didn't no, say no, that. I, <laughs> I like that what you no, that's cool. Okay. No, what I'm saying uh, is that if you like if you like someone who's into solace and being living on a reservation or away, because they're an introvert, mm -hmm. then you don't want to date someone who's outgoing and a big time social butterfly if that's gonna bother you. If that's gonna be if something that you're being introduced to and it'll make you open your mind up and you're open to having an open mind, then that's different. Isn't but it about you, balance? Isn't it about balance? Because I said that's what I'm you want to meet somebody that can introduce you to But not shit. everybody wants balance. Some people want what they like because now social media dictates so much. But when you're older and you're set, that's the hardest part. When you're older, that was my fear with having Rory. I had Rory, Rory at 40. I'm 45 Ooh, I now. Love. So when you're when you're setting your ways, you have a structure to your life. The hardest and most selfless thing to do is to change that. And I think that's with marriage, that's with kids, whatever it is. And when when you, to be honest, it's hard to unlearn some of these bad habits that people have. Oh yeah. And that's that's where it comes from. I think a lot of our black men, uh, they suffer and from black women, man. No, Come gonna, on. No, but let me say this. I'm gonna say this, but I say it in your defense. I think a lot of our black men suffer from narcissistic uh, train of thought because they're conditioned to think that way based on very primitive traditions or things that we were told were supposed to be done like men are not supposed to cry men are not supposed to feel right. insecure or feel sensitive you're not a cyborg you're a human being with human feelings and you have human emotions and a lot of times we've been raised a certain way so it creates this thing between men and women where we we do things that shouldn't really be done the whole marriage vows i think those are so primitive they should redo them they should be more of what's current because i think that they were definitely for men so what if it's more current what i I'll post you on my uh, on my page no, more. No, I think that's like, childish. But, the, but, that was, but what I'm saying is, truthfully, I think some of relationships need to go back to a lot of old-fashioned ways. My biggest thing with the new generation of women is they want a man like their dad if he was there, mm -hmm. but aren't half the woman their mom was. True. So it's harder. So it's a it's a balance. There's a lot of things that go then on. Then don't pick that woman. If you know that I'm sexy, not intentionally, just because that's just what I chose to be like. I don't think that I'm offending anyone intentionally with me being sexy, but I'm a woman and it's okay for me to be there. There was a time where it wasn't okay for a woman to Agreed. be sexy because you were considered a whore, a slut. You were you were promiscuous. You were looking for some. I was. I was looking for a cute shirt that had nets on it with the black in the front. I wasn't trying to look for dick, but because of all of these different... You look disappointed, Jack. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking for dick for this show. Like, I really wasn't. I just thought it was cute. I don't want you to, I don't want you to look for it. I don't, I don't want you to look for it. <laughs> there was a time where that those train of thoughts created a narcissistic mindset. Can I be honest with you, though? Please. A lot of the most secure men in the world would feel insecure being with you. That's just what it is. So okay, you, that, so, so, that hurts. I hear. Yeah, no, I, no, Candy no, watch, told me no, this no, on my wedding day. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is a lot of times what that means is you have to overly establish the fact that he's the man. You have to build him because that, a lot of that is a lack of confidence for a man. And this ain't no excuse I'm for no man because I'm not. I'm because I see a couple of my homegirls out there. Yeah, but, <laughs> when you saw me, you saw who? Since the day that I made that my spouse, when you saw me, you saw him. And you saw him, and that was the whole reason. I, I, I have uh, totally built my relationship around him as, at a point to where instead of being sexy, delicious, and you probably didn't even notice this because people have an idea of who I am. For two years, I was a gay little 11-year-old boy named Derek. And it was to keep my relevance so that I can keep my marriage. But what I, you're still actually, not here. You're not understanding. I'm telling you, is you okay, earlier you was like, I dated industry people because this blah blah right. That's what you said. You, I dated people in my line of work. It was work, easier. Right? It was convenient. That's yeah, yeah, who but now I watch. was introduced now, to. Now for a guy that's quote unquote not really industry, that's hard. Like men, and, I said to be getting men are more insecure than women. But we, but 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 have been in but jail for a long time. But do you think I disagree too. with you? So guess what? You need not date. You yeah, help with guess, you what you, guess what you need not wife up in delicious. six weeks. Delicious. 
He he just you did him. something to him. You you were sunshine or whatever. I'm oh, not. Hey, put I your mean, mom on the you phone. Know, I, I never come home. Of his dreams. Right. He was locked up for 20 years or some shit. Well, right. Even me is like showing me you. I'm the woman of your nightmares because this is my thing. If you don't come, it is not my fault if you don't present yourself who you really are. But you you don't you don't wave your beauty over his no. head and your options over his head. And I will continue to even in marriage. My thing is this. insecurities will come out eventually from a guy that he didn't even know he had. When he dates a certain caliber woman, how so do you, that's why do you think he didn't listen, know no, he had no excuse. It. This is no excuse for him. It's more of a compliment to you. You, okay. that's. I just want to get that out of the way. And what I mean Thank by you. that is, they don't feel like it. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying, like, it's not your fault. That, I'm not blaming you for be sexy because that's what attracted I'm him. The problem you, is, God damn it. Look here. That's not fair. What's not fair about it? I get your point though, but for me, it's like this: if if you say to me, and I can pull up interviews where I wasn't even present for the interview, if a man says to a woman or to an interviewer, "I love this woman because she's herself," I'll never judge her because me being judged, I sat in a jail for a crime I never even committed for for me just being judged from the outside. So I understand what that feels like. He's like, "But I'm in her personal space. I know who she is as a mom. I know who she is as a woman. I know mm. who she is, you know, as a sister." And got a studio audience question too. So all of these things were things that were out there and in the open. That's why I fell in love with the idea of. I can be myself, and you recognize the gem in that. I got it, and then we're gonna go to the audience question. But, um, but you have to, you have to like recognize the trauma that this man is going to, through. I and, did. and I don't think I you were em empathetic to the time that he's been away. Then he comes out of the, out of jail, mm -hmm. and he's a multimillionaire. Now he's a star. It's all so overwhelming, and it's a whirlwind. This guy's head is completely can I hit fucked you with up. Something? I, and and has he had therapy for that? No, never. Th but that's listen, what I'm saying. But I was the wife that said, let's go and get that. Okay, and he didn't want to get therapy. Well, no, some people don't want to admit being broken and needing therapy. Okay. Because some people, and I get that. I've, I'm Even in my state right now, I, I hate to say I suffer from social anxiety, but since the world knows that he and I are not together, I, other than work, I stay in. So I, I understand that part of having that anxiety and you don't want people to see you as weak. You don't want people to think that you're broken. You don't want people to think that you're sad. So as a man, narcissistic abuse, when someone has told you that as a man, you got to be strong. You can't admit that you were broken. Saying that you were broken, she might ask, well, what happened to you in jail? Or but therapy in our community anyway is kind of shunned. Like, and it shouldn't be mental health and things like that. Right. It's kind of looked down upon. I think we're finally getting to a place where it's opening up, which is dope. So yeah, I no, understand. It is. And so that's what I wanted. I, I wanted that for him because I wanted him. And then I, I wanted, even, even without him, even now, I wish him all the best. I still want that for him because I think that he's a great man. Do you want it with him? Do you want it with him? Can we reconcile? You have a no. ring on right now. You got I a ring on right now. I never take my ring off. Come Matter of fact, man. my great friend told me when you go inside, you better have that ring in the and car. And look in, look, so, for, wait, for, which camera? This? Look in the camera and no. tell him. I'm just playing. I <laughs> would, no, listen. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm saying no. Not because I don't love my husband, but because what he needs it can't even come by way of me. And that's the role that I played that was wrong. I cannot force that change. That has to be something that's done for himself. At, because what, at what point do you take the ring off? I don't know. I, I, Let's I go to the him. question in the audience. Let's go to the question <laughs> in the audience. They getting back together. No. <laughs> What's your question, beautiful? Oh, man. I'm disgusted. <laughs> no, are you? Is me? No. It's a comment and a, and a question for you. First of all, it seems like in, in, in a certain aspect, your partner can also be envious of you. Yeah. In some ways, where it's like they want, they also want that limelight and stuff, and they see you getting that shine, and they want to take away from that shine. They love you, but they want that for themselves. And my question to you How is- How did you see that? Honey, it's so transparent to me. My question to you is how do you still speak so highly and love someone so much that loved the idea of you, but couldn't accept the reality of you. Because that's painful as a woman to see that. No, listen, you're about to make me cry. This is the first time I've ever You're about to make me cry. No, this is the first time I've ever been able to be so Let's cry together. Like, no. like, I don't understand that. Thank you. You know what? Um, I'm sorry. No, it's cool. I, I, I just love him because I think that, like, he's a good guy. 
And I think that when you think about, like Jack said, his trauma and what happened to him, I'm a mother. Like, I'm a woman first, of course, but I'm a mother, like, to my heart. So I think of him, if I had a son who at 14 snatched off the streets in the park and was accused of raping, at that time, a white woman had never done anything remotely close to that and did not have the resources, the, the, the help or the, the, the money, nothing, the backing to number one, assist him, let alone even get him to go home. All of those other boys went home. Raymond was the one out of the boys who had to sit in a wait trial for over a year because he didn't have the money. And even when he had a group, an African-American group, to finally back him, to give him the, the bond to go home, they found out he was Puerto Rican and gave it to one of the other ones. He's Puerto so he, had them. he is. So I was okay. And yeah, I thought so that was a perm. When I think about <laughs> that, he don't have no hair, so I'm not sure what you saw. Oh. <laughs> but when I think about what he went through, and then the idea of those were kids going into jail. I have a 12 year old, just two years younger than the age he was, going in there afraid, not having your mom. All I can imagine is my daughter calling out for her mother. And then you have these predators that are looking at them like, you know, fresh meat in an environment. They were thrown in situations that were like adult. And these were kids. So I think about all of that trauma. And then I'm just like, yo, that can make a person discombobulated. Just naturally, mm -hmm. because you're trying to close that out, but it's not able to just be blocked out. And then you have this powerhouse wife who nothing can hurt her and she just knocks it off and that bothers you because it, it intimidates you. It's intimidating because she's powerful. She's powerful in her speech. She's powerful in her image. She's powerful in her talent, her faith, her family. So with all that power and someone who feels so powerless, I get that insecurity. But I was the wife that said, I'm not going to diminish my powers, but I'll share them or I'll love on you and I'll show you that you have your own powers. I don't want you to fear my power. I don't want that to become something that you're offended by. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a person too. As powerful as, as you may see me, I'm still human too. So to come home to this home in which I felt like we made together and that the world had just started embracing because they saw it was real. They saw there was a true heartbeat there. And so to have it stripped in order to... to hurt me or to break me or to bring me down to your level of insecurity or whatever you call it, that's wrong. I don't think that it's fair that hurt people hurt people. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But to, to answer your question, I love him because I always loved him. Like, so that wasn't like a light switch. He didn't leave and then I turned it off and then was like, so it's just there and until God releases it, trust me, I wish I could like just, you know, see a man and touch a man. And, <laughs> kiss a man and be with a man or whatever it just hasn't come to that point yet eventually I guess it will right but no I, I speak highly of them because I think he they deserve it that's dope you know what I'm saying I think that they deserve that he didn't deserve you not the way not the way you speak of him and how you've been treated well I don't I think what it is is I think he deserved me he didn't know that that's yeah 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 he didn't know that he deserved me. Can you see my fist now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, it, it was, and, and that wasn't for me. I, I know Ariel told me, well, you got to prove that to him. I feel differently about that. I oh. felt like when I gave you my hand in marriage and gave you my children, people called me a gold digger. I definitely dig for gold, but in my own backyard, I had everything I had prior to him, and God willing, I will have it after him. So that didn't bother me, and I don't dig for gold. I dig for platinum. I think that I've gone you know, past that. I've plateaued that. So... I'm okay with that. I want who I'm with to have it. Because I got it. It sounds like, like you want him it, back. It sounds like you want him back. I don't think he was jealous or wanted your limelight like, because he's I a know simple what you guy. Meant by that. He's a simple, he seemed like a really simple guy. I, I do think that the extra attention you get and all that he thought he could, certain things he thought he could handle. He it's intimidating. It. It's no, intimidating. Even, no, it's not even one he thought he could handle. He does want you. I'm sure he does, but I just think I don't, he just couldn't handle it. And, and then, yeah, that's a, that, it's a lot. Well, I, I don't, you guys think I'm a lot? Well, I, I, for I somebody think any that's woman is a lot, but then, especially in the, like, you dealing with somebody girl. in the industry anyway, we keep saying he's industry, he's not. 
He's not really industry. He's not industry. See, I, and, and when I met him, I was in shock because I treated him like industry. When Candy said, Raymond Santana want to meet you, I was like, me? That was with my mom. He, he, he didn't even know he was Raymond Santana, though. Oh, he knew. He was, back then, he was he very took, he was taking himself. He was taking advantage, but that don't mean he knew, knew. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Because keep in mind, why you saying he knew, he could have did the same thing. Uh, did the same thing if it was a quote unquote game uh, with with anybody and with everybody. That did happen before me. That happened the first wife. He left her in under a year. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. <laughs> but she wasn't famous, so I don't think he was looking for her fame. I, this gives me the idea that that comes up. And then that well, he, he has underlying issues he hasn't dealt with, like you said, right? And, and he needs to deal with them. But it just seemed seemingly cost him a good woman. So again, all I try to do is be devil's advocate, and mm -hmm. I try to be a little more understanding to a man's psyche because be I know it's hard. I, I, regular relationships are hard, and these aren't regular ones. So I even for me, I have to have a little extra grace even for my wife because I understand that. You know, even though Robert Lavelle is sitting here, sometimes RL probably does peek his head out the window. You know what I mean? My insecurities that I've had since a child and my low self-esteem probably rear his ugly head, and we deal with that. So, but yeah. But what is it about a great woman that is bad? Nothing. Nothing I, I don't all. understand the intimidation. Yeah, I mean, that's the okay, you, A great woman can have bad moments, too. Yes, you know there we go. No, Good, you know that. what? I love my bad moments. Let me tell you, I love when he, he used to get irritated at me being a wife. I was a real wife, and I'm from the Midwest, too. What that mean? East side of Detroit. So we clean up that mess. Oh, we have a sex tonight? No, turn over. Get up your lotion. Maybe tomorrow. But Whoa. I still love you. Whoa. No. What I mean by that is... No, I would never tell him to grab lotion. Uh, my point to you is that you don't get to threaten <laughs> that didn't make it better just because now. you don't have sex for two days. That's not... 48 uh, hours? But, uh, hold on, but, uh, yo... Yo, oh my London, God, get London. over yourself. London. You know that women bleed every month at least once a month if you are on a, a normal cycle. And let me tell what, you something. What, what's the song Imagine we, what's the song bleeding we got? from your genitals every month. What's the song we got? <laughs> red Rain? Red Rain. It was about bleeding? Yes. Okay, but... I'll run through the red rain. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. And, and I didn't mind him running through the rain, but it's more than just blood. It's a hormonal imbalance sometimes with women. So we go through... You things. sure that wasn't ego? No. No. This is factual. So what you're saying no, is he wanted, for you. So he wanted you all the time is what you're saying. He wanted you all the time. Well, you know what? Wanting me all the time, you want your man to want you. But what you don't want your man to do is pick on you in the daytime and then be all over you at night. You got to forgive me. We're we going to have these moments I'm and whatnot. Well, it's makeup sex. Say that's that. what it is. Yeah. No, that's your horny sex. And we are women. We're not. No, we're that's not, not true because I could be mad at my lady and I'm like, don't, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But that's <laughs> hey, watch this. Hey, 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 all real, all real. Watch this. <laughs> we, let's, 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 let's play a game called accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what are your weaknesses when it comes to uh, being in a relationship and dating? Leaving and me. Committed? Don't do that. Uh, 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 that's not what I just asked you. Was that a weakness for me? Abandonment? No, no. You know, what are your weaknesses? What Where are you I accountable for? Yes. What are you accountable for? Oh, my for? God. Let me see. I'm going to give you a few, though. I, I, okay. I, if you don't mind. <laughs> so I believe that I my OCD is a problem. And I didn't understand that before. I thought it was a compliment, but it's an irritation. It, it irritates to have that. Okay. And it's... I get it now. Okay. Um, I'm a, spoiled. Okay. That's a problem. Okay. I'm a Capricorn, so I'm strong, and I, I'm like, and my job, and I do understand that. Let's go deeper. My job is a day <laughs> Let's go right. deeper. Okay. Come on, let's Come go on, deeper. Come on, Counselor Jack. Come on, okay. you, you, you playing with us right now. Those are terrible things. I mean, no, they're not <laughs> terrible, but those are things that are real things that could be a problem. Like, my job, like you said, that can cause some insecurity unless you, I'm definitely that one that I'll put you in front of the world. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to worry. Or if someone approaches me, that's more so, you know, a, a That's reveal. easy for you. No, that's a reveal of who they are. But you not, can't but... make that a, a thing of me. If, if someone comes to me by way of DM, mm -hmm. you can't say, well, if you weren't so damn sexy, well, I was that way when you met me, when you dated me, when you proposed, and when you married me, and when you, you sucked you... me off last night. So don't you dare blame me for being good looking because that man slid into my DM. Time out. That's you're, not You're cool. deflecting, London. I am? Yes. Okay. Let's get right back on your weaknesses. 
Oh, that, weaknesses my job. when it comes. No, that's not a weakness. I'm talking. We talking. Don't about you think that me having a sexy image as a as a job, me having to host parties, going bookings, um, I'm co-hosting nah, with a that, gentleman. You do you think that that could play? A role in a man having an insecurity? I think that what happens is habits have to, yeah. I hate to say it, but in, habits have to be formed. And what I mean by that is insecurities are going to, in any relationship, so it's just magnified when you're in the limelight or you're in the industry. So for me, I will go, okay, I'm going to hit you before the show. I'm going to hit you when I'm in a room taking my wardrobe off, getting ready to go to sleep. Cut, 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 cut. There are certain things that you... Cut, cut, No, I just... No, 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 There are certain things you have to do. Ariel, Ariel, Ariel. I mean, you have to. You have to have these habits. Because somebody can still be sucking someone off while you're making all those calls. But I'm just saying. No, it really does happen. I've seen that. No, no, I believe you. I'm with you. I believe you. I totally believe. And that's that's his fear. That's the, that you just proved my point, though. Actually, these things could still be happening if you're calling. No, I miss absolutely. you. Absolutely. And guess who traveled for a living at some point more than me? I made sure that during that time to cover my marriage, that all of my ambassadorships took place under my roof. Mm -hmm. I built my makeup studio. I built my film studio. I built him a man cave. I did everything that I could to secure it. During the pandemic, I never left my house unless I went to the gym or the grocery store. And even I'm when I- I'm not saying it should be like that. It's not, see, my point isn't that he's right. right. I'm excuse, not saying it's right. Me, I'm saying me, that there are certain safety procedures- Excuse me, guys. You have to put in place- Excuse me, guys. To yeah. make somebody feel more secure. I'm controlling. Oh. You are? I'm controlling. Why? Um, I, I like to be in control. I like in what to, way, though? I, I, I want to know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. I need transparency all the time. I, I need, uh, um, I need to. What, what, what else? Some some things that could be a fault of. I'm mine. demanding. I'm super demanding. Oh, see, and I may be demanding, but I'm not. De I think I demand the things that should be. In my mind, I think things should be. I and think that how we all are, though. See, we all think what we think is right. Do you think that trash should be taken out? What do you mean? It, see, sounds like it's just a common sense thing for you, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But it's all about how you were raised. Again, we we have things that we do a certain way, and 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 I we and my had these issues in relationships. In an I'm not even going to use so that as an excuse. It might not even be that. It might even be um, where he was raised in New York or how his family did true. things. So we don't know. I'm, and again, That's these aren't excuses for anybody. But whenever you're going in a relationship, I always say you're dating that person. You're dating how they were raised. You're dating their bad habits, Ooh. and that's a big thing. And if you don't know, I think it's unfair if a man hits you with a, represent a representative or a woman, if you're not giving the real, then how do you expect this person to actually connect to you? If you don't Agreed. give me what you've really been through, and I get it, it's not coffee table talk to say, listen, this happened to me when I was younger and this, that, and the other. But eventually, if you're presenting yourself as yourself and you want this person to be actually authentically attracted to you, then it shouldn't be a problem. But if you're only presenting what you think I'm going to like, and then later you start to reveal yourself and you Hold on, when Drew Hill was here earlier, you said a lot of me. What, like we was talking about, when the, you said a lot to me. What were we talking about then? We was talking about music, the music today, and the young guys being straightforward and transparent. Like, oh, no, me, they please, were please, too please. aggressive. Like, yeah, no, you don't but have to then, be aggressive. But then, but, but then the guy, but then the Drew, Drew, uh, Drew Hill has all these songs. They really saying the same thing the young kids mm -hmm. are saying. Just being more creative. But they just being more creative. And RL is teaching me to do that. One of my biggest regrets <laughs> in life, and I, just, I was talking to my brother about this earlier today. Mm -hmm. I don't be lying. Why should you? I don't, I, I don't, I don't lie to women. And I feel like, a lot of times I have gotten myself in more trouble by being 100 with people that's not 100. No, we talked about this. That's not what it is. No, what it you're is, not filtered. That's different. Yeah, no, that's not even. No, no. What it is is I told him, it's like, excuse my language, but there's a difference between saying, suck my dick and I want you to taste me. You're yes. saying the same thing. You're not and you just have to figure out the same creativity you put in your comedy and a lot of things you do. You got to put that in your in your vocabulary. That's all. That's all it is. It's about saying the same thing, but saying it a little more subtle. Yeah, it's like the F-R-E-E, -E, fuck nigga free. Exactly. I, I think they're going to get her to be able to express herself and have all of that oomph that she has on her with a more commercial sound so that Agreed. she can actually, you know, uh, appeal to the masses. So that's the same thing with you. But I also say that if that's the type of woman that you want or that's the exchange that you want to be able to give to your woman, then approach women like that. That way the ones who don't want to hear that shit will mm -hmm. phase out. And then there's going to be somebody. Oh, oh, Jack, you're so funny. You're crazy. Come yeah. here. Boom. Right. You're going to have somebody. I love you. Now, now that, that, do, that do happen 
Yeah. But I'm talking about the ones you didn't wasted your time with being 100. Well, it's not a waste of time. It's a learning experience. Never look yeah. at any of it as a waste of time. It, what? Well, I mean, you know, that's the, true. Yeah. So you don't ever feel like you've wasted your time before, the or fuck, somebody's the wasted last your time. Three years of my god dang life. And, no, I don't feel like I was. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, this has become a mirror. See though. what I'm saying? No, it's become a mirror for it's me so because confi- there's no okay. wrong it's so way to eat a You can look at yourself. In. I'm just playing. No, there's, not uh, this. No, it's become a mirror because God has forced me into this hole of a, a place where I'm, and I don't want to call it a hole, Lord, forgive me, but I'm in a space now where I won't let anybody else in, and I guess it's because God wants me to deal with me. Mm-hmm. I want you to see what being in COVID is and like. because you're still married, really. Yeah, but it's like he wants me to get a taste of me. No, but you get what I'm saying? Like, why would you not entertain? That, that's your shield, really. <laughs> that's your reminder. This is? That's your shield. That's your reminder. Like, yo, what you going to do? You go, got a guy going to walk up to you. Hi, what's up, baby? You're oh, hi. Oh, yeah, never mind. Like, that's your remind. I mean, to be honest. Uh, you know what? D- like men, guys are asked for my number now. When I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about you look at it and you like, oh, hey. That's fine. <sighs> never mind. I, I just can't do this yet. I'm not ready. I got it. Yo, <laughs> I got now, it. now, how do I pull up out of that? Who, who says you should? Maybe this is, you said God has you in a certain place. Maybe there's a reason for that. Oh, okay. But I don't think that, I'm going to ask my girlfriend out in the audience. I don't think God got me in this place necessarily. You focused, and I bet you've gotten more accomplished Cole professionally right now because you focused than in a long time. That's the truth. See? And that's what I'm saying. So what it is, is if God puts you in a box where it's all mirrors, okay. who you going to look at? Yourself. You can only look at yourself. So instead of me now looking to blame, it gives me a position to be able to, you know, address my role, that accountability to see where I could have, even if it's not about that relationship, just in life in general. And just be better. Yeah, just be better. You know, just grow from this. Just find a way to not see the glass half empty. Because, ooh, if you'd ask me in February, March. That means you come a long way. So that means if yeah. it is somebody new, when it's time, you'll be even more ready. And, that's and they'll I get mean, the new that's improved. That's when I'll take this off. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Hey, look here. No, this a bad motherfucker. You came and did my therapy. Nah, not not me. No, no, no. That's my lady, not me. We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do, and we got a lot of time to do it in. Yeah. We got a lot more episodes, you know what I'm saying, coming you guys' way. I'll be back. Come on. This is going to be a regular thing. Um, you know, is there anything that y'all want to say to the audience, man, before we get out of here today? Because like you just said, you know, this is the first of many conversations and yes. stuff. And I, all I, I all I did uh, uh, feel like we just, we regrew a lot. Yo, I did like for real. This was like dope. I swear it was like therapy. Well, I just, I I'm happy to be on the Jack Cineo Hall show. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, it just is. That was my <laughs> I appreciate you. I, I just, appreciate I, you as well. Thank you. I just you. am honored to be here. I, I was glad that this was about just a conversation. This didn't feel, this ain't an interview. This was just us chopping it up. And that's what it's supposed to be about. And I told that's you, okay. people are going to be comfortable with you because you're authentic, you're real, you're funny as hell. But besides that, you're a good person and people yeah. can feel that. And you're just icing on the cake because you good people as well. And you're transparent. So, yeah. man, thank y'all for having me. Thank all y'all behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Airbrush, you know, right here for me. You know, we, I'm just playing. But thank y'all, man. Delicious. You want to say something? No, I just want to say, hey, look me up at I Am So Delicious. I-A-M-S-O-D-E-E-L-I-S-H-I-S. She ain't hard to find. No. Hey, man, like I always say, you just can't say you're really something you got to be. Hey, tune in next time at New Jack Thriller City. We'll see you later. Hey, y'all go to commercial. Do I have something in my eye? <laughs> <laughs> Take us out. I wonder if she could tell. Hey, that was hey. a good